Get ready, Brevard. It's time for Friday night high school football. Party UNC Healthcare and Southeastern Sports Medicine and Orthopedics proudly presents the Brevard Blue Devils High School Football Game of the Week. And WSQL Radio is on the air and online to bring you every single exciting play for the football season. Get ready. It's time for Brevard Blue Devils High School Football. to Brevard High School football on the Brevard uh, Blue Devil live stream tonight. We're down in Burke County to face the Patton Panthers. This is Lyndon Clayton up with my buddy Danny Hine and Blue Devils and the Panthers involved in a must win situation for both teams. The rest of the season, Danny's gonna be pretty much must win for our Blue Devils. Yeah, when you think about the progression of the season, I mean, we're all square right now. Both teams come in with uh, really close matchups on paper exact uh, same records both conference and non-conference and we're we're in a, a beautiful setting here we haven't played here before and the ride in was just uh, uh, spectacular it, especially listening to you sing I, it was I good wasn't it i didn't know you were so talented yeah, in good. that regard but well, uh, as long as the record's playing i can <laughs> and, and once you turn the record off there's no acapello here you know. <laughs> yeah. oh, we, acapoco yeah we had a good ride in but uh, this is going to be an exciting game, and it's a and it's a critical game uh, for the Blue Devils, of course. Uh, given our conference schedule, where we are tonight, and the next three games that we have, so I mean, this is a must-win, Coach. It is every game now. It's must-win, including the two we have at home, Hendersonville and Polk County, respectively, for the next week's coming up. But we've dug ourselves quite a hole, and if we're going to climb out of it, then it starts tonight. That's right. And, you know, last week, so this has been yet another interesting week for the Blue Devils because we played on Monday night. And, uh, you know, that changes the course of the week in terms of preparation and practice and sort of the, uh, the game planning. And so here we are four days later back out on the field in real time playing away. This is about 90 miles away from Brevard. This is the furthest uh, out that we go in terms of our uh, conference schedule so we'll see how they've prepared how they've adjusted uh, certainly Monday night was a difficult outing we saw some glimpses of some good things but overall Chase uh, was able to really perform well they averaged about 9.6 yards per carry with the young number six uh, McCombs really stacking up the yards and of course you and I were both impressed by that quarterback, quarterback. who could throw and run so they put a good equation on the field Monday, but that doesn't matter. We're here tonight to play, uh, and we'll talk about some of the specifics relative to these two teams. But, yeah, you know, I thought we might not see that many people here, but, but Brevard side's filling up pretty good given where we are. Uh, yeah, they are, and it's a beautiful setting here. We've never played them before. Right. First time meeting ever between Patton and Brevard. Uh, speaking of quarterbacks, so going back what we talked about about Chase, I noticed that their quarterback for Patton, who's played most of the season, is quarantined. Yeah, he will not play tonight, so that's probably going to aid the Blue Devils. Yeah, we just found that out from the uh, the uh, PA announcer here. So that who knows what that's going to do to their offense. Obviously, you know that throws you off. And of course, we've had uh, more disruptions than we can uh, recall throughout the course of the season. Uh, but I'm excited. I'm excited because, given the challenges of of, of what's happened. Uh, you still got the blue and white out there on the field. We're going to see some energy tonight. Uh, it's Friday instead of a Monday, so let's see you know, what kind of package they can put together. The last couple games, especially East, uh, which was prior to the Monday night game, we were able to really start seeing them uh, get the ball on the ground and gain some traction in the run game, which is going to be key. Speaking of quarterbacks also again, number 16 is in pads tonight for the Blue Devils. That's Anson Burgess. Looked out there earlier, and he was warming up. How much he'll play tonight, I don't know. Uh, but it is good to know that he's not out for the season and might be available not only for tonight but the rest of the season. The rest of the season will, will be only two more weeks if we don't win a few conference games. We came in. We're 0-2 in conference. Patton's 0-2 in conference. 
We've won two ball games non-conference. They've won two. They have beaten Madison. They've beaten Cherryville. That's all they have right now. And we have, of course, Robbinsville and East Henderson. So there are a lot of similarities between these two teams. Right. And having him dressed out as QB, even if he doesn't get any game time, you know, I think that's important as it relates to sort of the emotions of the team and just seeing these players out there. Gravely was back out there on Monday. Uh, so we might have a full complement. I mean, obviously, uh, I don't know if we've had a game this year. We've had everybody out there. Zach Wilson's still out. I saw yeah. him. But he, of course, we, had the ACL. Uh, blown, he blew his knee out last spring with the ACL tear, and he's probably – I don't think he'll get to play all year, but uh, he's out with his team anyway. But yeah. Yeah, he's one of the few I've seen in street clothes. Hayden Johnson's back tonight also. So it should be – we've almost got a full complement. So – Hopefully the Blue Devils can produce a W. It's all about Ws now. Yeah, it absolutely is. And we talked about the setting. This actually looks a lot like Brevard's uh, sort of backdrop here. Mm -hmm. I thought it'd be a little uh, flatter out here uh, further east we went, but this is a a gorgeous night, nice temperature out, and uh, we're going to have some fun. And I I, I have high expectations for Brevard, and I know that uh, they have that for themselves, uh, even given the short practice week and going live full contact Monday night, Monday night football it was. And, of course, we got back way past our bedtime. (laughs) It's already past my bedtime. (laughs) After three, right? Yeah, after (laughs) the way I'm doing it at school Uh, right now, that's about the truth. (laughs) Yeah. Well, you know, and, Chase, if you look at uh, Monday night's game, uh, they passed for 247 yards, uh, ran for 227, 474 total yards. Brevard in that outing was only uh, 78, 78 yards passing, 104 on the ground for 182 total yards. Of course, we didn't have the ball all that much because, uh, you know, they put a lot of points on the board. Uh, So we'll need to balance that out for sure. But these two teams match up, I mean, almost as closely as you can get on paper. And we'll talk about that a little bit uh, later on in the segment. Yeah, we're talking about a 43-14 loss. Last week, though, for Patton, RS Central beat them 48-0. So these two teams come in fairly evenly matched on the negative side particularly, but uh, we've got to get a W tonight, and hopefully we'll do that. We also have to take some time to do a little business. So we're going to take a break, go back to the station. Here's some words from Tarina and our fine sponsors. So we'll be back after this. This year, for every play, we know know there's a little prayer that no one gets hurt. That's why we are there, too. Party athletic trainers, physicians, and specialists. We're watching closely for any sign that someone needs care. And if your child is hurt, they're seen right away by the region's top specialists. The Party Sports Medicine team is at every game, match, race, practice, and workout, providing medical attention and guidance. For us, winning is all about playing healthy and smart so you can perform at your best. Progress is an internet connection that matches your love of what's on it. Progress is not being able to remember what a loading bar looks like. Progress is Wi-Fi coverage that actually covers every room in your home. Progress moves at up to one gig speeds, has no data caps, and comes with 24-7 tech support. Comporium, always ready. Hunter Subaru is proud to be your hometown dealer. For over 80 years, we supported you as much as you have supported us. As your hometown dealer, we give you two years of no-cost maintenance with every new Subaru. Come see us right down the road in Fletcher off Airport Road or online at huntersubaru.com. At Hunter Subaru, we're celebrating. Our new state-of-the-art facility on Hunter Airport Drive in Fletcher is open for business. That's right, we moved. Stop by our new location between the Ag Center and Broadmoor Golf Course just across from the Asheville Airport. See you soon or online at huntersubaru.com. Almost 50 years, Charlie's Tire and Automotive Center in Brevard has been your one-stop shop for new tires and auto repairs. You can always expect competitive prices on new tires like Cooper and Michelin, services like computer balancing, flat tire repairs, and tire rotations. Auto repairs include brakes, wheel alignments, exhaust systems, transmission, steering, and suspensions. 
They also do state inspections, oil changes, and much more. Charlie's Tire and Automotive Center in Brevard, your first stop for new tires and auto repair. Hey, Transylvania folks, Harris Hardware in downtown Brevard is your number one hometown hardware store for all your everyday needs all the time starting right now. Harris Ace Hardware has all the things you need to make life easier on their shelves when you need it now. No waiting a couple of days, they have it right now. And guess what? Advice is free. Shop Harris Hardware Main Street in Brevard. And welcome back to Brevard Blue Devil Football on the Blue Devil Network. This is Lyndon Clayton with Danny Hine, and we're in Burke County at Patton High School where our Blue Devils tonight are taking on the Patton Panthers. And uh, Danny Hine, we were talking just before we went to break that our squad looked relatively healthy. Then we look across the sidelines, and we see number eight, Kyle Lovett, is not in uniform. Yeah, and I got a message from Miss Diane, and she was the first to let me know that. And certainly uh, we're looking over there at uh, number eight. And uh, that doesn't bode well. You know, he's been uh, certainly a big playmaker, steady, uh, predictable, the best set of hands uh, that we have, and he is a hard worker. He inspires a lot of plays, too. I mean, he and Joe connect, and uh, so uh, we'll have to see some of those other wide receivers uh, step up and make it happen. Next man up. That's well, right. A reminder that our pregame show is brought to you by Comporium Cable TV and Internet, serving Transylvania County and also, a little uh, info about our Blue Devil Network and our live video streaming. Remember, along with the radio broadcast on WSQL, that's 1240 AM at 102.1 FM, we are live video streaming Brevard Blue Devil High School football games. It's called the Blue Devil Network. And whether you're in the stands, at home, or anywhere, you can watch every play live by going to the BHS Blue Devils Football Facebook page. You'll find a post about the live stream with a link to click on. You can do that on your smartphone, tablet, laptop, or computer. And remember, if you miss the live broadcast, the video stream production will also be broadcast tape delayed Sunday nights at 6 p.m. on Comporium Cable TV Channel 102. Special thanks to Party UNC Healthcare and Southeastern Sports Medicine and Orthopedics for bringing you this new technology. Danny Hein. Well, we it's got loud the, in here. It, it, well, I was just thinking we got a lot. We got a lot of stuff going on. The band's coming out. We got the PA going. There's a lot of energy, which is fun. This makes it a great environment. Uh, certainly, um, you know, we, we've got to pay attention a lot closer. It's a little bit harder to hear, but uh, that's what makes Friday nights uh, at high school football so exciting. They got a big band. Looks like about uh, 75 of them out there. So, uh, again, a great matchup. You've got two teams. Let's talk a little bit about uh, how they stack up on offense and defense. Um, through their uh, year, year to date, so to speak, uh, passing, uh, Patton is 35 for 70 for 468 yards, and that's about 94 yards per game as I do the ciphering. And Russian, uh, 196 carries, 684 yards, about 137 yards per game. Now, this is uh, very close to what Brevard does. We're 58 for 167 through the air uh, for about 158 yards per game and rushing 158 carries on 701 yards, 116 yards per game. So total yards coach each squad, uh, Patton is about 230 and Brevard's 255. So they stack up pretty evenly on the ground, through the air, and in terms of total yards. It's a good example of what coaching does. Back earlier when I had to admonish you for not having stats, <laughs> now look at you. Not only did you admonish me, you, you got on you got on to me. Well, that's, that's, that's true coaching. Yeah, yeah. And you well, get on somebody and they produce, that, you know, you feel good about that. It's I, good. I try to learn from your wisdom. It's uh, something, and now you're overdoing it. <laughs> We've got stats on everything. From how many tubas we got in the band and oh, all sorts boy. of stuff. But anyway, no, good job. I appreciate that. And like you said, it just comes down, Danny, to bottom line is we got three games left. If we're going to go to the playoffs, we need to win all three of them, and we're going to be an underdog possibly in two of them. Tonight, I think the paper had us favored by 18. I don't know that we're that much better than Patton. I hope we are. Yeah, and, you know, it really depends on uh, sort of which team shows up tonight for Brevard because we've seen both ends of the spectrum, and, and we've seen – uh, energy, enthusiasm, and, and uh, excitement, certainly in that first outing. And then, in, you know, in, in series throughout the season, they've been able to put 
a lot of things together. What we haven't seen is sort of a consistent play through all phases of the game, through all four quarters. And I know that they're fully capable of it, uh, but tonight we really have got to have that uh, if we're going to go through the rest of this conference season uh, with some hope to get to the uh, the playoffs. Well, you're right about that, and the young men are out with the flag, so it looks like we're about ready to have our national anthem. So let's go back to the station because we cannot bring that to you. Tarina, back to you and our fine sponsors. Are you experiencing roofing problems with a recent record rain? Do you have water stains on your ceiling? Hey, you think I'll take the day off? Is your old furnace talking back to you? You're flying solo today, pal. I need a little me time. Mac Heating and Air Conditioning can repair your grumpy old furnace or replace it with a new high efficiency Linux system. <sighs> yeah, sorry. I just can't seem to move any air today. We'll see about that. Get a dependable Linux system from Mac Heating and Air Conditioning and start saving today. Linux, air is life, make it perfect. Progress isn't just about knowing where you came from. It's also about knowing where you want to go. Progress is as big as the Carolina communities we serve and as small as the living rooms we're welcomed into. It's about treating customers as friends because in most cases, that's exactly what they are. Comporium, always ready. Hey, welcome to Opie Taylor's in beautiful downtown Brevard. If you haven't been here for a while, you gotta stop by, man. You wouldn't believe what's going on here at Opie Taylor's. It's amazing. We've got science. We've got trucks. And cars. We've got art. We've got art. That's perfect. This is the funnest thing ever. You can be just like catnip. And of course, we've got games. So stop by and play with us at Opie Taylor's soon. We're open seven days a week in Brevard, North Carolina. That was funny. Some things cannot wait a few days to get fixed. And that is where Harris Ace Hardware makes things happen. That's right, get the things you need now at Harris Hardware Main Street in Brevard. They have a huge inventory to make your shop a one-stop experience with easy parking in the back. Come by Harris Hardware Main Street in Brevard like others have done since back in 1972. That's Harris Hardware Brevard. With every cheer for every play, we know there's a little prayer that no one gets hurt. That's why we are there too. Party athletic trainers, physicians, and specialists. We're watching closely for any sign that someone needs care. And if your child is hurt, they're seen right away by the region's top specialists. The Party Sports Medicine team is at every game, match, race, practice, and workout, providing medical attention and guidance. For us, winning is all about playing healthy and smart so you can perform at your best. Progress is an internet connection that matches your love of what's on it. Progress is not being able to remember what a loading bar looks like. Progress is Wi-Fi coverage that actually covers every room in your home. Progress moves at up to one gig speeds, has no data caps, and comes with 24-7 tech support. Comporium. Always ready. Owner Subaru is proud to be your hometown dealer. For over 80 years, we supported you as much as you have supported us. As your hometown dealer, we give you two years of no-cost maintenance with every new Subaru. Come see us right down the road in Fletcher off Airport Road or online at huntersubaru.com. At Hunter Subaru, we're celebrating. Our new state-of-the-art facility on Hunter Airport Drive in Fletcher is open for business. That's right, we moved. Stop by our new location between the Ag Center and Broadmoor Golf Course just across from the Asheville Airport. See you soon or online at huntersubaru.com.
Just another example of patent excellence. Welcome back to Brevard Blue Devil Football. We apologize for that delay, but there were several requests, I guess, going out. A lot of people apparently in this county, Danny, before the National Anthem have been impacted by COVID. Yeah, several on quarantine, and certainly uh, they're recognizing that tonight. So, you know, it's uh, affected everybody everywhere, and certainly uh, Burke County is no exception. So uh, we uh, wish all those families and players well, and uh, we're getting ready for a matchup here in about 10 minutes for kickoff, but this is, uh, again, a crucial game for the Blue Devils. And you know what I want to see when they come out? you got to have fun with this deal. I mean, there's, you got the, the energy, the enthusiasm, the excitement, uh, that emotion is going to be important, and we say it every game. But, uh, you know, typically the first quarter and the third quarters for us, it takes us a little while to tune up. Uh, we just need to come out of the gate swinging. We do, and we need to do whatever it takes to get a W. Simple as that. We need to play a, a brand of football that is conducive to uh, physicality. We've just talked a lot uh, both ways about the ineffectiveness at times of our lines, defensive and offensive lines both, and the fact that we're getting people in position where coaches want them to be, but they don't wrap up, they don't finish. And if we could do that tonight, we can win this ball game. Yeah, and a lot of it, you know, has to do with, uh, you, you know, finishing the tackle, you know, playing through the ball, playing through the whistle, uh, wrapping up, getting low. I mean, a lot of, you know, position is crucial in that leverage. And so we need to see uh, we're, we're converging on the ball quickly, and we often have what we call the swarm there. Uh, but the second and third effort uh, has sort of gotten to us through the game, so we need to uh, seal the deal, so to speak, Coach. Tuesday morning, I was walking down the halls at school following our, our broadcast on Monday night, and everybody was tired and back in early on uh, Tuesday morning. And I heard one young man, and I'm not going to mention his name, but he was talking about they're going to be on us again all the time about wrapping up. He said, I'm tired of hearing about wrapping up. Well, I wanted to say, son. Wrapping up is the key to tackling. You've got to tackle people or you're not going to win many ball games. That's after they'd given up 43 points last Monday night. So hopefully they've improved a little bit in that regard because, like we said, uh, it's all about when you start the season, you want to do well, but you can't say you've had a good year if you don't make the playoffs. Yeah, that's right. And, and, and I think, you know, key as always is that offensive and defensive line, and we've got a lot of kids that are – certainly playing both ways, and that's uh, no easy task, uh, to say the least. But we've got a few more dressed out tonight, and we might have brought up some kids from the JV that looks like we had a pretty big roster out there. So uh, it'll be interesting to see what uh, what we can do here. Patton's offense doesn't have any particular standouts like, you know, for example, Chase did with uh, one running back who's probably now rushed for about 1,500 yards uh, through last week's game. Uh, so we really, again, on paper look very similar, but that doesn't matter. Like you say, it's really heart, guts, and grit, and uh, they need to bring that out onto this beautiful grass field tonight. Brandon Clark, I think is a young man's name, who's been their quarterback, a junior, is quarantined tonight. So they they don't know what to expect tonight. They don't know who's going to start at QB. They don't know whether it's going to be an alternating committee kind of situation. But right now uh, they are kind of in a state of flux without their quarterback. Also, uh, before I uh, forget to do it, I want to congratulate the Brevard High School girls volleyball team. Won the conference this past week with a win over Hendersonville. Finished off Polk County also last night. So they will be hosting the conference tournament. As long as they win, they're the number one seed, and they will play at home next week starting, I believe, on Tuesday night. First round of the state playoffs, which they're guaranteed to be in, will start a week from tomorrow on a Saturday. So congratulations to these young ladies for a job well done. The JV team, you mentioned a lot of JVs out. They didn't play this week. Uh, they did not have a game last night. So a lot of these youngsters are dressed out. Some may see some action tonight, Danny. Yeah, and, you know, a lot of them have gotten reps throughout the season with the injuries that we've experienced uh, and the quarantines and that kind of thing. So I see the captains for both teams making their way out to the field. So, again, those uh, those reps, every every rep counts, and those game time plays uh, add to the overall uh, sort of uh, 
emotion that you bring to the table and confidence. So we're going to need that tonight. And uh, this team is bringing out, looks like, uh, five captains here, as I count it. And we've got three, no, four on the other side for the Blue Devils. And we'll do the coin toss here in a minute. But crucial game. I mean, it doesn't matter what's happened here up to this point or how we got here. You know, we can talk about the past. But right now we've got to tee it up and play ball. And we'll, I really want to see Brevard play the style of football that really we started the season with. I mean, that, that intensity is what I'm looking for tonight. Amen, brother. Well, while we wait a second or two, we'll talk about in a minute. How about if you can, let's look at our list of sponsors. We need to thank all these fine folks for what they're doing for us to bring you Blue Devil football. Sure, tonight's game is brought to you by Party UNC Healthcare, Comporium Communications, State Farm Agent Meredith Baldridge, Telco Community Credit Union, Fisher Realty, Taylor Made Chimney Service, Gordon Pharmacy, Brevard Auto Parts, Quezon Oil Company, Haywood EMC, Hunter Subaru, Charlie's Tire Center, Mac Heating and Air, Opie Taylors in Brevard, Sully Steamers of Brevard, and Mountain Real Estate. Danny, thank you. We've got our co-captains out with the white hat. They're all introducing themselves, and we're going to have the coin toss again in a minute. I think I saw uh, Garrett Swicegood, Nathan Stockton, Sammy Kessinger, and I think number 71, which is uh, Hunter Kinsey, I believe, are the co-captains for the Blue Devils tonight. And we're ready now. As we're about ready to get this game underway. Blue Devils normally, when they win the toss, will defer to the second half, so let's see what happens. There's the coin toss, and... Wait to see, I believe, maybe Patton's won it, I think. They have, and they've deferred to the second half, so we're going to be receiving the football to start the ball game. So our kickoff return team will be taking the field. Brevard will have the first opportunity to get on the scoreboard. We still, according to the clock, are about four minutes away, but I hope they're going to, as soon as everybody gets back to the bench, wind that down. We're looking at still most of our players are just now coming out of the dressing area though well they still got to run through the band the band's all set up there well, uh, that's yeah that's that's true so we may be a few minutes but we'll continue to stay with you because uh this is like we said a big game conference game both teams looking for their first conference win both teams are 0 two in conference like we said uh Patton's coming in with wins over cherryville and madison blue devils of course beating robbinsville and east henderson so it's going to be two evenly matched teams uh, albeit the paper did say Blue Devils by 18. So most of the time, as I've tried to make picks in my morning show we used to with Bill Sack, uh, they don't get it right nearly as much as we did. So, you yeah, know, we're, we're looking right now at uh, – I hope they're right this time, though. You're uh, uh, pro prognosticators of uh, grand regard, huh? That's, yeah, well, we, we pretty much were <laughs> – Guessing, tossing coins, because so much of high school football is so unpredictable. Yeah, and you know, while we're doing this, uh, big shout out to all the folks that tune in. I want to say thank you. We got people throughout the week uh, tuning in from all over, and I want to especially uh, say hello to my sister Christy and brother in law Chuck listening down in uh, Alabama. And despite the fact that he's an Auburn fan, he's a pretty good guy, but uh, he always listens in, and I surely appreciate it. And, he may, he, I know he listens because we talk very specifically about the game, so that's that's really good to know. Well, I'd like to all, also would likewise like to shout out uh, my daughter. Her name is Jana Clayton. She's out in California. My granddaughters, Marin Cheney in Boulder, Colorado, or Longmont actually, and Laurel Cheney, who lives with her mother in California, and a special person, Julie Robbins. So all of those may be listening in. If they are, thanks for listening again. And even though uh, – they don't understand some of our terminology. Like I said a few weeks ago, my daughter said, what's a pooch kick and what's a pistol and <laughs> things like that. And I said, well, it's terminology that's secret only to those who have been informed and have insight from above. So. <laughs> well, they're going to uh, – we got Garrett back there and uh, Nashawn. So, um, you know, dangerous uh, special teams players. And, you know, this pooch kick has be become popular. We don't know what uh, – Patton may do, but uh, I like seeing Brevard get the ball first. Typically, they'll throw the ball quickly out the gate to get that confidence going, uh, get some reps going pretty fast. So we'll see what we can dial up here. No, Kyle Lovett, bad news. But Nashawn yeah. Griffin had a great return last week. He's back along with Swicegood. And there's a line drive kicked up the middle, and Nashawn Griffin is going to pick it up. 
He's fielded it around the 20, 25, 30. There There's Nishan Good job. breaking free, and he's across the 40-yard line up to about the 42. So Nishan Griffin picking up where he left off last week. He was a bright spot for us last week, one of the few. And he can continue to be. You notice that run back. When he gets in stride, he covers a lot of ground very quickly, and uh, he gets in the open field. Uh, it's going to be hard to run him down. He's a good athlete. He's a good basketball player, too. So young man's a fine young man. He's got a younger brother named Eli who's going to be a player also. That's a name to remember in the future for Brevard Blue Devil fans. All right, Joe Powell's in at QB. He's got twins to the right side. And, Joe, there's in motion. Garrett Swicegood back off motion to the left side. He's got the handoff. He's Here slashing go, across midfield. Garrett Swicegood still on his feet, and he's going to be down inside the Patton 40-yard line, down to about the 38. So, Garrett Swicegood in motion coming back right to left, takes the handoff, and he has a big gain that's going to bring it down first and 10 for the Blue Devils on about the Patton 38-yard line, Danny. I don't think that's a play we've seen yet this year with Garrett coming across the field taking the ball, great block by the uh, left side of the line there. That's a good sign. All right, Joe Powell again. He's got twins still to the right side. Joe in their pistol. Joe on the option, and he's going to pitch to Nishan Griffin. He's hemmed in. Nishan breaking tackles, and he's going to get up to about the 35-yard line. Pretty good play, actually. A lot of people there for Patton to make the stop, but he gained about three, I think. So it's going to be second down and about seven for the Blue Devils. As Joe Powell coming out with, with the option. Again, and Nashawn Griffin picking up where he left off last week. If Nashawn Griffin could get to be a productive, consistently productive, Danny, he is one fine running back. Yeah, and again, he'd take the pressure off of Joe so he can throw the ball and maybe get a little time to execute. But Nashawn showed great vision on that play. This is the way he played last year on the JV team. I watched a few games, and he really looked good. Snap to Joe. He's back to throw, and it's been blown dead. So officials have blown that play dead. Dead ball penalty. And it's going to be on us. Penalties again, been one of our huge, huge bugaboos all season. While we're looking at this, our first quarter of action tonight is brought to you by Hunter Subaru, featuring the hometown promise. Hunter Subaru, thanks for your sponsorship as the Blue Devils will now be looking at first down and about 15 back to the 40 yard line. Original spot, I think, was the 38, so we've lost a few yards with that penalty. Joe Powell, and there comes. The rush, they blitzed it hard, and Joe fires out in the flats. That pass is complete to Jalen Carver. Jalen's down on about the 26-yard line, I think, so good pass by Joe Powell on the money. Carver with a good catch. Yeah, you know what I liked on that, Coach? They blitzed the linebacker there, and we were able to pick him up, and Joe had time to throw the ball as a well-run route and uh, good play. It was, and it's going to be first and 10 now, close to the 25-yard line for the Blue Devils. Joe did a great job, and like you said, the blitz was picked up. Joe Powell now still in the pistol. Twins to the short side on the left. There's a handoff Ooh. again inside, and that was Caleb, I lot, believe. I believe Caleb Jenkins, I think, a lot of people there at the point of contact. Yeah, he looked like he ran into a brick wall there, a gain of maybe a short one, who knows. But, uh, you know, getting Caleb and Deshaun into the equation uh, and then get, getting Garrett a little bit of rest because, you know, they, they play defense too. Uh, would, would help open this thing up for DeVard. Yeah, and a good opening period score with a good long drive and productive result would be great for the Blue Devils. Witness what happened last week when we missed the field goal. There's Joe rolling right. He's firing out in the flats. That pass is going to be intercepted. Joe Powell's pass is picked off down around the three-yard line, and the Blue Devils, two receivers out there, and he overthrew one and underthrew the other. Yeah, he sort of just threw it in that uh, no man's land in between, and uh, there was a defender in the right spot, and they were able to come up with it. They're going to be uh, first and ten from around the three, four-yard line or so. And looking at Sid, you might have to help me spot some of the numbers of some of their skill position people, Danny. We're looking mm -hmm. right now, though, at the three. They're in some version also of the pistol. There's a snap. And off inside, and Rice, the quarterback, hands off. It's going to be a gain maybe of one. Don't know that he got back to the five. The Blue Devils stiffening there defensively. Yeah, short loss on the play. It looks like That's number 11 is at QB. Number 11, of course, looking down is Quentin Rice, their quarterback. He's a backup. Like we said, uh, Randon Clark quarantined. Their QB have been playing most of the season. Lost of one, actually. It's going to be second down. 
Rice back in at quarter. He's still in at quarterback. There's the snap. He's back to throw. Fires out in the flats. Pass is complete outside. About up to about the 13-yard line. Number 15. That is Desmond Sexton on the reception for the Panthers. Well, we saw that a lot last, or say last Friday, Monday, uh, at Chase. That quick out, uh, that quick uh, pass to the flats. Uh, That's well executed, but uh, you know he picked up a big nine or eight or nine on that play. Third down and one for the Panthers. Their first pass completion. Rice at quarterback. Like we said, their regular quarterback is quarantined. There's a handoff back inside. Blue Devils are there. Kind of a big wall. It's going to be close. Yeah, that's going to be awful close. Vasquez on the carry. We'll wait and see what this is. Going to see if they bring the chains. I don't know what the deal is right now. Marked it short. Yard marker. They did. It looks like they did. I'm not going to bring the chains. It's just short. So it is going to be. Fourth down for the Patton Panthers, so they're going to probably kick this early in the ball game. As I believe that's number eight dropping back. Waylon Rutherford, I believe, is back to kick. Love that first name, Danny. Oh yeah, you can sing that too. I, can. I noticed that. Uh, Isaiah Phillips for the Blue Devils, number 79, closed that play down. A kick, it's high, but it's not that long. We got to get away from it now. And it's bouncing back, taking a Blue Devil bounce. All right. So it's going to be down around the 33-yard line of Patton for the Blue Devils. So we get it back. Good job by our defense. Well, you got to take advantage of this. I mean, this is superior field position for the Blue Devils. You got to shake that last uh, turnover off, uh, wipe it off the mental map, so to speak, and get back to work. All right. We have 7:51 left in the first period. We have no score. Each team's had one possession. Ours ended in an interception. Theirs ended in a punt to us. So we're going to. Have the football around the patent 33. There's, again, looking to see where we've got on both sides. Of course, we're without Kyle, Kyle Lovett tonight. Joe's going to fire out in the flats again. That pass is going to beat to Sammy Kessinger, but he's going to be down to, I'm trying to see right now, down about the 27, 27, 28 yard line. So it's going to be a gain of about five, second down and five for the Blue Devils. Well, Joe threw that with authority. It was a good pass, had good velocity on it. And uh, Sammy had uh, good, strong hands and kind of sat down and uh, brought it back to him and made sure nobody could get to it. Pretty good job of Sammy Kessinger. There's Joe again, the snap, and there's a handoff to Jenkins. Caleb Jenkins inside, trying to barrel his way up, but he's dropped across uh, about the 18 yard line, maybe or so, trying to see the spot right now. Caleb Jenkins, it is going to be third down and about four for the Blue Devils. So the spot's going to be about the 22, 23 yard line, maybe. Thought he'd gained a little more than that. Well, they got, yeah, they moved it up. Oh, it's third and short now. Third down and short, it is. They have moved it up. So I thought he had had a little bit more than that. Anyway, third down, big. We need a conversion here. Absolutely. Go so just keep it. We'd like to see him do that. Now, Burgess is in. There's a high snap. Burgess is going to pick it up. He's down, can't get to it. And I believe Patton has recovered a football. Ensign Burgess seeing his first action in a while. Got a high snap, and we've turned it over again. Joe Powell's intercepted. Bad snap there, and Anson couldn't come up with it. Rolled around, and the Panthers all over the football. So our defense is back on the field again with 6.34 left in the first period. We have no score. We have two turnovers, though, Danny. Yep, the defense uh, did the job on that first series that Patton had the ball. They need to help the offense out here again, get them back out on the field, and we got to make something happen offensively. All right, here come the Panthers and their version. They've got a couple of wings set there, and there's a big fullback driving up the middle. It's about up to about the 42-yard line. Number trying to pick up the numbers again. These Young men, we're not familiar with them, and like I said, they've they have uh, replaced their quarterback. So some of the people are playing positions they normally don't play. But uh, the young man Rice did a pretty good job the first time. He's still in at quarterback. Blue Devils, look like they're coming. They do a handoff back inside again, and there's young man that is close to midfield. I believe that was number nine. That was. That's Smith on the carry. Yeah, that'll be enough for the first down. I'm like pretty they sure. Up the first down. So, yes, they're moving the chains. It'll be first and 10 right at the 50-yard line for the Patton Panthers. 
These colors remind me a lot with the P on everything of Pisgah, Danny. Actually, I was thinking about that before the game. It's the same kind of uh, font as the Pisgah P, too. So. Same shape, too. Yep. <laughs> That's what I meant to say. <laughs> there's an option, and there's a pitch. Good gain. They're still driving down the field. Smith again on the carry up to about the 40-yard line. It's going to be another first down. Well, that's what we got to shut down quickly. I mean, the defensive line and those linebackers have to close. Defensive line has got to anchor, stay in place, and keep those uh, tackles from shedding and getting to the secondary blocks there. Panthers offense inspired by the two Blue Devil turnovers already in the first, an interception and a fumble recovery. So Blue Devils have had two opportunities to score and have squandered both so far. There's Rice at QB. And he takes the handoff. He's rolling left. There's a pitch out this side. And I believe that's number, when trying to see, number six. Uh, Smith. That's Smith again on the carry. The line and it's going to be down to the Blue Devil 35-yard line. Makes Phillips on the stop. Yep, Phillips. And looks like he had an assist by uh, Hayden Johnson Four there. Game, Playing the right side cornerback. We need to, another turnover right now. We've just kind of misfortune is found us here in the first period. Yeah, I mean, two good opportunities. The field position we had. Uh, Both we, times. Yeah, it looks a little bit like what Chase was doing last week, looking to the side for a signal. Yep, they're giving them. Last week we saw a lot of hit and run, bunts, and all sorts of things <laughs> it looked like. But there's Smith again. He's blasting his way up, and he's still on his feet. It's going to be close to the 30-yard line, I think. Trevor Smith running hard, running straight up kind of, but he's gaining yards. Well, no doubt they watched the uh, film against uh, Brevard and Chase. And, you know, I was just sitting here and thinking this this looks a lot like what we saw from Chase, a couple of quick outs, and then running the ball just sort of up the gut or right off tackle, and it seems to be working for him at the moment. Third down and one for the, the Panthers of Patton High. Beautiful stadium here, nice place. Nice looking campus. First time I'd ever been here. Yeah. First game ever between Patton and Brevard. There's a snap and fakes and fires out in the flat. Pass is complete. And it's going to be, looks like enough for the first down. Up to about the 24 yard line of the Blue Devils. Rutherford on the catch. Waylon Rutherford. Swicegood on the hit. We're getting a lot of help from the PA announcers here. Well, you know, we're, we're giving them a cushion on that quick out. So we've got to maybe tighten up on that or. Um, get more pressure on the quarterback to try to force an error. 345 left in the first period. We have no score. There's Rice at quarterback again. There's, he's going to sweep to the left side. Rice is going to cut it back, and he's going to be bumped out of bounds he's side, up to right about the 20-yard line, it looks like. Well, he's playing with confidence. He may not be their starter, but, I mean, he looks to be uh, in decent command of the offense, and, He's thrown the ball a few times there. He's run it and uh, executed the plays Probably pretty well. a kid that played a skill position to begin with, and they just moved him to QB because he does run well, and he's thrown it well. Mm -hmm. On time, just the short stuff, just, you know, don't do too much. To a new quarterback coming in. I don't know when they quarantined their regular quarterback, but this guy's doing a good job right now. There's the option to the right side. He fakes, keeps it back inside. We've got a lot of people at the point of contact. He's going to be up about the 18-yard line, it looks like. Looks like Caleb Jenkins on the tackle. It's Had going to be third down, down about three. three. Big third down here. Big third down as they're driving. Like we said, we got 318 and counting left in the first period. Here comes Rice back up. They've got some pretty good running backs. Nobody of note, so to speak, statistically. It's kind of like been a good group by committee. Thought somebody moved in the offensive line, but they didn't. They didn't call it. There's a high snap, but he recovers. And there's a handoff inside and barreling up across the 10 yard line. That is number 30, Deshaun Cantrell Vasquez on the carry. Another first down. It's going to be first and goal. First and goal down there, Danny. Deep in our red zone. Yep. Ball marked at the nine yard line. 257 here left in the first. First and goal from the nine. So Patton driving. Blue Devils started out really well, both offensive series. First one entered in a, ended with an interception. Second one ended with a fumble. And here they go. Rice pump fakes. He's up the middle. And he's Ooh, great be tackle. Ground. 
Garrett Swicegood with a great hit. That's what we want. Back to about the 13-yard line. That's one of the best tackles of the season. Yeah, that is exactly what we want. Uh, had his head and shoulder in exact right spot, drove him back. Uh, loss of maybe one on the yeah, play. They're spotting it back on the 10, so it's where I guess where he first was hit. But anyway, it'll be first and goal from that point. That's the kind of thing you like to see. Down. Yep, sure do. Rice back in at quarterback, still still in there. He's got Vasquez, or Cantrell Vasquez in there with him. There's the handoff. The young man's blasting his way through. Number 30. And he's in the end zone. That was number 30. That's number 30, yep. Yeah. That is Deshaun Cantrell Vasquez with a, no flags and a TD. Patton strikes first, six zip. The Blue Devils, 207, left in the first period. Down six nothing. Well, he had he certainly had a big hole on that side. They uh, got a big push from the offensive line, and he just uh, was able to get through there without much resistance. Two point conversion here. Here's Rice rolling to the left side. He's still rolling, and he's going to walk into the end zone. So a two point PAT for the Patton Panthers put them up eight zip. We are back after this. And welcome back to the Blue Devil Network and our live stream of Brevard Blue Devil football tonight. Also listening in 1240 AM WSQL, 102.1 FM if you're listening on the radio. Brevard Blue Devil football live streamed here and we've had an official timeout for some reason on the field as the Blue Devils trail eight to nothing, 207 left in the first period. Danny Hine, it was a case of turnover city yeah, two turn- turnovers, great field position that we started out with. I mean, that's uh, certainly something you got to control and uh, had great opportunity. And now we're down 8-0 with uh, another opportunity here to just, you know, shake that off and get back to work. I mean, this is uh, still the first quarter. And uh, the offense is connected on a few good pass plays. And, and we've seen Nashawn and Caleb run the ball, but it's just we've turned it over on both possessions. So got to put it all together. Yeah, we have as unfortunate Jackson Burgess had come in for his first action since the first game of the season and a high snap over his head. He couldn't bring it in and couldn't control the fumble. So here's the kickoff again, and it's going to be a type of onside kick, and it's going to be picked up uh, and taken back up to about the 41-yard line. I believe that was Jackson Burgess yeah. who picked it up. Jackson doing a good job back to the 41-yard line. Uh, so it'll be Blue Devil football, first and 10 from their own 41 at this point as the Blue Devils trying to get back. We've had unfortunate couple of bad breaks, turnovers here. So like you said, we got to shake it off and get back in this. We need to answer them. Looks like uh, Joe's back in at quarterback here. Yeah, Joe Powell back in. We've got twins to this side. Twins to both sides, actually. Kind of a wing back. Here's motion back to this side, and there's a handoff. Enough to Jake Gravely faked it, actually. I thought Jake had it, but the handoff's going to be up top to Garrett Swicegood. He's going to gain a couple up to about the 43. Running more motion tonight. That was Jake Gravely in motion. I thought he had the football. Yeah, they sold that pretty well because I was watching Jake as well. Garrett ended up going right up the middle for a short game. Second down about eight for the Blue Devils. Is the Garrett Swicegood, one of their one of the finest players we've had in a long time, both weight players, all conference both ways for the Blue Devils. Yeah, he's tough. He's the emotional leader of this team, and he's going to have to help get a sense of urgency as we stand right now. There's a snap to Joe. He's back to throw. The pressure coming from the right side. He rolls left. Joe Powell's going to try to keep it, cutting down the sidelines. Joe Powell with a great job lunging ahead, 
Let's see where they mark him out of bounds. He's going to get up into Patton territory, close to the 40-yard line, Danny. Yeah, great run. I mean, I, he made a good decision on that, was ready to throw under duress, as he has been most of the season, uh, tucked the ball and darted around the left side, hugged the sideline, and was able to get uh, a good gain on that. 41-yard line, the spot, 107 and counting left in the first quarter. Patton's up 8 to nothing. Blue Devils get the first down with a fine run by Joe Powell. Yeah, I mean, sometimes it's better to uh, not throw the ball. <laughs> well, he did a good job then. Uh, made a good run, strong run down the sidelines. He's a big kid. Handoff inside again to Swice good. There's Garrett, and he's going to be up around the 33-yard line on the carry. And it's going to be, checking to see the spot, it's going to be second down and about two, it looks like. 33-yard line is the spot. We got to keep punching this thing down the field. We you do. Know? We I mean, just, just need to uh, run it. I think right yeah. now what we need to do is just continue to run the football until they stop it. Right. Because the turnovers have actually killed us. Throwing down here might not be the best move. Joe Powell again at quarterback, and there's a handoff inside to Swice Good again, and he's going to gain maybe one, close to a first down. Yeah, it'll be it'll be close. It's going to be short, I'm afraid. Looking at the spot. He got a pretty decent spot on yeah, that. Yeah, he did get a good spot. They're going to bring the chains. Blue Devil football brought to you, like we said here, our first quarter of action by Hunter Subaru featuring the hometown promise. Hunter Subaru, one of our fine sponsors. And our first quarter has ended. It just, wow. clock just continued to run while that was all going on. So we'll be back for second quarter action of Brevard Blue Devil football following these words from our sponsors. For almost 50 years, Charlie's Tire and Automotive Center in Brevard has been your one-stop shop for new tires and auto repairs. You can always expect competitive prices on new tires like Cooper and Michelin, services like computer balancing, flat tire repairs, and tire rotations. Auto repairs include brakes, wheel alignments, exhaust systems, transmission, steering, and suspensions. They also do state inspections, oil changes, and much more. Charlie's Tire and Automotive Center in Brevard, your first stop for new tires and auto repair. And welcome back to Brevard Blue Devil Football here on our live stream brought to you by the Blue Devil Network. And you're listening in. Thank you for doing so on WSQL, 1240 AM, 102.1 on your FM dial. And the Brevard Blue Devils will have the football. They were a little short, it looks like. Danny, I think we're looking at third down about one. With yeah. just, We just begin the second quarter of action. If you just joined us, the Blue Devils turned it over twice in the first quarter, and we are down eight zip as the Panthers scored and converted the two-point conversion. So Blue Devils trying to answer now as Patton has taken the lead. Big crowd here tonight for the Patton Panthers. And we got a pretty good following on the road tonight, more than I thought, Danny. Yeah, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm pleased to see all the Blue Devil fans over there on the other side uh, supporting the team. And this is a big possession for the Blue Devils. We need this. We need to punch this thing into the end zone. It looks like this uh, is going to be sort of a long battle tonight, and it could be uh, you know, come down to a very tight margin at the end of the game. So we, we've we got to reverse sort of the momentum, those first two turnovers, wipe that uh, out of our mind and make something work here. Well, a two-down opportunity because this deep we're not going to kick, and hopefully we'd like to. I'd like to see Nashawn Griffin come back in and do what he did last week, work his magic a little bit. He did a great job last week. And this kind of situation, if you've got Garrett Swisegood running the way he is up south, we could get – Nashawn sprung loose. Yeah, uh, it would be great. I don't know whether he's even in the game right now or not. I don't think so. I don't see him out there. 
But he is—he did a great job last week. Had a couple of fine runs. One kickoff return also. There's Joe Powell going with a long count. Handoff inside to Swice. Good. No, he didn't. keeps Joe's it. Keeps he keeps it. Good it. job, Joe. He got it. He Joe got Powell's it. Powell's going to go to the end zone. And Joe Powell doing a great job, job. ball handling. I thought Garrett Swice could again had it. Thought Jake Gravely had it a while ago. And Joe Powell, great job. Great run. And he looked really good on that. Oh, boy. He sold that to the he, whole stadium, didn't he? He did. Fine <laughs> play by Joe. That's uh, Joe can run now. Joe's a big, strong kid with athleticism. Uh, and he's had a tough time because he's been pressured so much this season. But he sure responded. Joe Powell. Greg. Huggins is on for the PAT. They're going to go for one. He missed a big field goal last week. But that kick is up. And it is going to be barely through. We just barely <laughs> squeaked that one in, but it's good. That was a squeaker. 8-7 our score. 11-51 left in the first half, and we will go back to the station to hear these words from our fine sponsors. With so much to do hey, online. Transylvania folks, Harris Hardware in downtown Brevard is your number one hometown hardware store for all your everyday needs all the time starting right now. Harris Ace Hardware has all the things you need to make life easier on their shelves when you need it now. No waiting a couple of days, they have it right now. And guess what? Advice is free. Shop Harris Hardware Main Street in Brevard. And welcome back to Brevard Blue Devil football here in Burke County at Patton High School where Blue Devils have just scored and converted the PAT. So it's 8-7, to seven, Patton with 11.51 left in the second period. So Ethan Huggins will be in the kickoff as the Blue Devils responded. It was a good response, Danny. Yeah, it was, and uh, Joe sold that with authority. And like you said, uh, once he tucked it and, run, and ran, he can cover a lot of ground real quickly, too, with those uh, – with that long stride of his. He did a great job. Great run down the sidelines to set it up, too. So Huggins is going to be kicking off. Let's see if he does our familiar old pooch kick. That's for my daughter, a pooch kick. And he does kind of toward the sidelines, and it's going to be bouncing out of bounds, it looks like. So there'll be a flag on that. So that didn't fare too well for us. No, that's, you know, when you when you think about that pooch kick, I mean, it, you're kicking it over to the side pretty much every time and trying to get those midfielders to field it and uh, force a turnover, I think. But uh, that one just bounced right out, of, right out of bounds for a penalty. I'm looking to see where they're going to spot it. Looks like it's going to be about the 35-yard line. So it will be first and 10 for the Patton Panthers on their own 35. This is where we need to uh, force a turnover here, get the ball back down in the end zone. If no turnover, at least three and out would be yeah. nice. There's Rice back at quarterback, though. Motion coming back to the right side, yep. and we've got flags. It's going to be on the offense. Yeah, they're going to back it up. Patton's having some of the same problems we've had, either holding their illegal motion. So that's going to be an illegal motion, and it will be back them up five yards. First and down 15 from, looks like about the 30-yard line. Blue Devils trail 8-7 to seven with 11.51 left in the second quarter. But a fine run by Joe Powell, set up by a fine run by Joe Powell. There's Rice on the option to come to the right side, and that's going to be uh, Cantrell Vasquez. That's a young man with a hyphenated last name. He's up to about the 37-yard line. And coming in, I think I saw Gannon Hemphill. Yeah, Abram Slice Justice. good too, Abram maybe. Yeah, Abram did a good job maintaining contain on the left side there, forced the play back towards the middle, uh, and the uh, linebacker was able to close pretty quick for a short gain of about, looks like two. Keeping that outside shoulder free. That's right. Here we go, second down now. And about seven. There's Rice, Rice with the long count. There's a snap another fired out in the flat, and he's jumped a little soon. Number eight got out of the gate a little fast. So they'll back this up again. So this is, works well for the Blue Devils. Keep backing them up. This is usually what happens to us in key drives. Yeah, we've certainly seen that in the, as you mentioned, <laughs> the hold calls throughout the season that have hit us us on really key plays. So it's uh, good to see if we can take advantage of this. 
Second down, the spot will be about the 22, or excuse me, 32 yard line. As the Blue Devils now trying to get a defensive stop here, maybe get the ball back, maybe even a turnover here. We've had some, a good line surge, a defensive line surge has been excellent at times tonight. There's a snap, here we go, rolling right. He's firing out in the flats. That pass is low and incomplete. Right intended for number eight. Rutherford, Waylon Rutherford. Well, I like what I saw on that coach, number 79, Isaiah Phillips, and number one, Caleb Jenkins, both fighting the way to the left side as the quarterback was rolling, uh, doing a little swim technique and shedding that block and putting some pressure. Third down and about 15 for Patton. So this is a big, big play. Without their regular quarterback, you don't know what to expect here, but what you're looking at right now is a young man stepped up. He's done a pretty good job so far. But, uh, you know, this. there's a snap. He's going to roll left. He's looking to fire. He fires out in the flats. Pass is complete, but there we're we all go. over it. Good tackle. We're all over it. Good tackle. He's gained about five, but that's uh, that's not nearly enough. It was third down and about 15. So it's going to be fourth down now and about nine maybe. That was a great open field tackle there. Was, was that Garrett, I believe? Yeah, that kid rolled to his left and fired, you know, squared up, threw the ball pretty well. But yeah, what you're looking at right now is good defense. And we had a little cushion to give with a 15-yard necessary for the first down. So they're back to punt again. The last time he punted, uh, he punted high but not too deep, and it bounced back the Blue Devil way. Rutherford back to punt. There's a snap. It's a little low. He does scoop it up. Oh, he he got it deflected, it. I think. I don't know what happened, but that is not what you want to see if you're patting. That's about Balls a, out of bounds. Yard, about a seven-yard seven punt. Seven-yard punt. So it's going to be uh, – that's a big help for the Blue Devils. Yeah, it, it, he it short hopped on the snap. He had to field it and get, and he just uh, hit it off the side of his foot. Yeah, I didn't know whether somebody blocked it after he scooped it up or not. But anyway, the spot is going to be about the patent 42 for the Blue Devils. We still have 9.58 left in the second period. Blue Devils are down 8-7. Key possession here, though, with the uh, clock going under 10 minutes, and uh, you want to get the momentum back in the Blue Devils' direction. Let's see if the last drive inspired some confidence and some momentum for our Blue Devils. Joe Powell, there's a handoff back inside to Jenkins. Jenkins dancing a little bit, but then cuts it back up. What's and we've got here? extracurriculars going all the way down the field, <laughs> down around the 41-yard line on the other end. I think they were out of the uh, side judge's view, about 20 yards behind yeah, the play. Down about the 38-yard line is the spot. It'll be second down. Well, you don't want to make any mental mistakes, especially uh, when you're picking up yardage here and moving forward. you got to play, got, still got to play smart. Well, you work right now, what you really need to do right now is continue the, the ground game that we've continued to run and Joe's doing quite well. Until they stop that, I don't know that I'd go airborne again. Yeah, I agree. I mean, if uh, you're getting three yards of play, 3.3 is all you need. Keep at well, it. Well, as we speak, there's Anson Burgess. He's firing deep, looking for Carver. Wow, we got him. But we got a flag, oh. and Jalen Carver pushed off. I can tell you right yeah. now, I saw it. Anson Burgess did chunk that one out there, though. Well, let's talk about that, too. So, Anson, you know, uh, we haven't mentioned this, but he went out the first game uh, last two minutes with a broken collarbone. And, uh, you know, he's out there. It's inspiring to see him out there tonight. I mean, he's it fought is. his way back. Uh, we didn't think he would make it back in the regular season. And he's worked hard. He's a tough kid. And certainly I I didn't expect to see him tonight. And here he is chunking the ball downfield. Uh, we'll see what the penalty is. It's yeah. coming back. Jalen pushed off. I hate that, but Jalen's, you know, he, he did create some space, but yeah. not <laughs> legally. You just can't do it that way. Ball was thrown well, though. Yeah, Anson threw that with authority. But I was surprised. I, of course, I didn't realize Anson was in at the time that they threw the football, but that's going to backfire on us. That's going to back us up. So that score will not count. Jalen Carver caught the pass after the pushoff, but that's going to be offensive pass interference. Well, again, you know, Anson brings uh, a different equation to the game, and so if you've got two uh, tools in your toolkit there with Joe and Anson, uh, this could be really beneficial here. Danny, we have two penalties on that play. The, uh, holding, push off, and, and yeah. holding also. So we're back to the our own 46-yard line. So wow. So we got some climbing to do. 
There's the snap. Burgess looking to fire. He does out in the flat. That pass is complete and hit and hit hard. Was trying to see, was that Sammy Kessinger? Yeah, I'm trying to pick it up. Sammy, Sammy's yeah, coming Sammy. up. Yep. He took a hit. Spot's going to be about the 49 yard line of the Blue Devils. So Anson Somebody. turned and got rid of that pretty quick, had some good velocity on it. That uh, collarbone doesn't seem to be much of an issue at the moment. Nope, but it's third down and forever. Yep. So it's going to be 835 and counting left in the second period. Blue Devils are down 8-7 to seven and have been marched back by two bad penalties. Turnovers and penalties have hurt us, but we're still in it. There's Burgess back to fire, and he fires across the middle to Jalen Carver. Carver does catch this one. They can't shake free as he's up to about the 39-yard line. And it's plays like this with Anson throwing like that and us getting some protection where we really miss Kyle Lovett. Yeah, you, you know, how ironic. <laughs> you got Anson back, and then you got Kyle out. So it's like we can't quite catch a break. Uh, but good pickup on that to uh, bring a better place to punt from here on fourth down. Fourth down, though, as Joe Powell's back in. One of the better punters around. Let's pin them deep. Joe Powell, Joe Powell has done that before, too. He takes a snap, and Ooh, he kicks, that, and he's got hit. Joe, so we're going to get that one flag, back. Yeah. We're going to get that one back. Hope Joe's okay. That I might be a... Play, yeah, he definitely. Uh, that's going to go against Pat. <laughs> well, and Joe had to uh, kick it fast just to keep it from being blocked, but yep. it wouldn't have mattered. Well, I'm surprised at the surge that Pat exerted there because we didn't do a good job of blocking on that play at all. But no. we are going to benefit from the penalty. If if it depends on Danny, it depends on what kind of flag they throw on that. If it's incidental, uh-huh. it may. My, yeah, five yards. I don't think yeah. that didn't look incidental to me. No, though. that looked like it was a 15-yarder to me. But we'll wait and see. With 7:38 left in the second period, Blue Devils were down eight to seven as Joe Powell got hit. But they were there almost by the time Joe caught that snap. Yeah, it was almost like they weren't expecting the snap. That looked a little odd. And you know, that's a dangerous uh, position to be in as a punter. You're certainly vulnerable there. He took a shot, but. Uh, Joe's a tough kid, ran back off, and he's getting the play coming in at fourth and looks like fourth and two. Fourth and two for the Blue Devils. We did not get the first down, so this is another big play here in the first half. And we've got a timeout call by the Blue Devils, so we're going to take one also. Do a little business back after this. You've changed thousands of diapers, cut off hundreds of trucks, played hours of peak food, duck, duck, goose. You're flying solo today, pal. I need a little me time. Mac Heating and Air Conditioning can repair your grumpy old furnace or replace it with a new high-efficiency Linux system. <sighs> yeah, sorry. I just can't seem to move any air today. We'll see about that. Get a dependable Linux system from Mac Heating and Air Conditioning and start saving today. Linux. Air is life. Make it perfect. And welcome back again to the Blue Devil Network's live stream of Brevard Blue Devil football here on WSQL Radio. Also, 12.40 a.m., 102.1 on your FM dial. And the Blue Devils now looking at a big fourth down and two as they trail 8-7, to 7.30 left in the second quarter. Well, they took that time out to figure what they're going to figure out what they're going to do here. And it doesn't look like we're going to punt. No, Joe's in. We're not going to punt, I don't think, from here. Joe Powell in. And I would look for something like that last handoff and Joe Kep. Uh, Joe's had a great time running the football thus far tonight. There's the inside handoff, and it's going to be Swice good. There you go. He was hit, but he's going to drive forward up to about the uh, 30-yard line, it looks like. I think he got the first down. Should be enough. Good second effort by Garrett Swice good. 724 left in the first half as Brevard down 8-7, to seven, but driving. Had to overcome a couple of turnovers. And some a bad break or two. I th- I really think that should have been a 15-yard penalty on the uh, roughing Joe when he was punting, but uh, we didn't get it. But anyway, we got the first down. Yeah, typical Swice good style there. Yeah. Takes a hit and keeps on uh, he chugging. He was not going to be denied. He's not. It's all that time in the weight room and that determination. There's Jenkins. He doesn't keep it. Here's Joe again. Wow. Joe, another great job. Jenkins got killed. Everybody thought he had the football, <laughs> but he is – Going to be down inside the 25-yard line. Joe Powell's doing a tremendous job 
of ball handling tonight. I, I, I thought Caleb had the ball, did you? That's three different times I could have sworn somebody else had it. Well, you know what that reminds me of, that RS Central game when they played that uh, sort of uh, fake and everybody in the stadium would bite on it. So yeah. they're executing that well that's, tonight. That's the best I've seen Joe handle the ball. Yeah. When you're ball handling like that, it's happening. That's, that's, that's a huge plus. First and ten, those is for the Blue Devils. There's a snap. Joe's rolling. He's going to pitch. Pitch to Jenkins. Go, Jenkins baby, go. The right go, baby. Side. He's go, got baby. momentum. And jo- Caleb Jenkins How going about to that? the house. There we go. Caleb Jenkins is looking for laundry. Don't see any. Caleb Jenkins on the board for the Blue Devils. That's what we needed. Head of steam and go to the house. 13 to 8, our score. Caleb Jenkins taking that one in. Well executed read by Joe, too. He uh, waited for the right moment, uh, pitched the ball to Caleb, who got north and south really quickly. And uh, I love to see Caleb get in the end zone. We need more of that. He got up the field pretty well, too. He sure did. <laughs> With this north and south stuff, I don't yeah. know much about direction, but he turned it upfield. Here's Huggins in. There's the snap spot. Flag and down. The kick is up. There is a flag on the play. I thought I saw a patent guy go off sides, but that's just uh, me. I don't know. I was just, you know, we got another thing to worry about without Kyle. Who was holding them? Was that oh, Sammy yeah. Kessinger? That's a good point. I bet it is Sammy. Uh, Sammy's coming off the field. I don't know if he held, but I wouldn't be I bet he surprised. Was, Kyle, uh, Kyle Lovett normally holds for PATs. Yeah. That's another thing you take for granted is that snap and the exchange, but offsides against well, Patton will be declined. It's going to be declined. The PAT is good. They'll count that. 14 to 8, our score with 7.01 left in the first half. Back after this. Looking for a bank alternative? A credit union is an ideal choice if you're tired of. Progress isn't just about knowing where you came from, it's also about knowing where you want to go. Progress is as big as the Carolina communities we serve and as small as the living rooms we're welcomed into. It's about treating customers as friends because in most cases, that's exactly what they are. Comporium, always ready. Board, so I don't know what that was all about. I thought the penalty was against Patton. It was. There's a snap, there's a spot, that kick is up. And it is good. So we're going to stay with you, tell you a little bit about our live stream as the Blue Devils do score. 14 to 8, our score was 7.01 left in the first half. Remember, along with the radio broadcast, we are live video streaming Brevard High School football games. It's called the Blue Devil Network. Whether you are in the stands, at home, or anywhere, you can watch every play live by going to the BHS Blue Devils Football Facebook page. You'll find a post about the live stream with a link to click on. You can do that on your smartphone, your tablet, your laptop, or your computer. And remember, if you miss the live broadcast, the video stream production will also be broadcast tape delayed Sunday nights at 6 p.m. on Comporium Cable TV Channel 102. Special thanks also to Party UNC Healthcare and Southeastern Sports Medicine and Orthopedics for bringing you this new technology. Thank you very much for that. Again, our second quarter brought to you by Haywood EMC, proudly powering the needs of our community. Danny Hine, 14 to eight, looks better than it did just a little while ago. Absolutely, and Patton has fielded the kickoff. They bring it out to around the 39 yard line. So Patton will have the football at that time, trying to get some business done here, missed the kickoff. You but, know, uh, you, you have a fa- your own Facebook page. Don't you do country do, and western yes, country, videos yes, on yes, that? Yes, yes, uh, yes. <laughs> I am just absolutely Mr. Techie. Spot will be the 38-yard line for the Patton Panthers. Yeah, that I don't was, know what a Facebook yeah. is. <laughs> I'll show it to you one of these days. But, yeah, great to see that execution on offense, uh, you know, gaining that confidence on the ground, and that's what we've needed all year. Now we need to answer defensively. So back in, here's Rice again at quarterback. There's a handoff back inside, and there's going to be a fine run up around the 43-yard line by Trevor Smith. Young man, we're getting a lot of help thanks to the PA guy down there, Danny, for identifying players. Yeah, it makes it a little bit easier to. It does. Because I'm not that good of a spotter. Well, I've noticed that. <laughs> but, I'm, but I'm not good at stats either. <laughs> well, yeah, well, I've noticed that. But a little coaching got you. Well, uh, 
A little bit. Well, not a little bit, a lot better. So <laughs> we're looking now at second down about five, I guess. As there's Rice again at quarterback. Poor Patton, there's he fuck he oh. fires out in the flats, and that mm. pass is going to be caught up around the 50-yard line. Well, I was talking to the pump fake and then a guy's yeah. pass. Well, I was talking to the scorekeeper. Number 11 is uh, an athlete, typically a basketball player. I don't think he played last year, and he's come back to play his senior year, and certainly they've dialed up his number tonight, and he's showing great confidence. Spot will be around midfield. A good pump fake. I didn't know what he was doing there for a minute. I thought maybe he lost the grip on the football, but not so. No, he, he uh, sold that one. He did a good job. Spot will be the 50, first and 10 from that point for Patton. They're trying to answer again. There's a handoff there back inside. We got a lot of Blue Devils at the no. point of attack, but he gains five yards from that point of attack. That's Smith again up to the Blue Devil 45-yard line. Yeah, we had uh, two hats on him at the line of scrimmage, but he broke right through. Nathan Stockton on there and, uh, to make the tackle. We've got uh, looking also at uh, Cannon Hill, Jackson Burgess, a lot of our defensive folks, a lot of people going both ways. Sammy Kessinger still in. Good to see him back in. I thought he jarred up a little while ago, but uh, he's back. But here's Rice on our 45-yard line. There's a little low snap. He options back to the left side, and there's Smith down the sidelines again. A good pitch and a good run. Smith down, going to be down around, looks like about the 32-yard line. Well, you know, it's kind of deceptive because you see Blue Devils all around, but uh, they're not taking him to the ground. Nope, that's a first and 10 from that point. 5-10 left in the second quarter. Blue Devils up 14-8. to eight. We've got a tight ball game here. I mean, this is uh, important defensive stance for Brevard. We need to keep them out of the end zone, get the ball back for the half. We're getting to the point of attack and not finishing again. That's yeah. hurting us. There's Rice, handoff again, coming back this side. Weaving, bobbing outside, and there is Abram. a fine tackle by Abram Justice. Tyler Johnson, Tyler flag Johnson flag down. on the carry. We've got a flag. Coming in from the back judge. Justice. Justice on the tackle. A good tackle by the big senior. I hope that's going the other way. I don't know what that penalty could be. I, I didn't see anything in particular. Now we're waiting waiting to see what they're going, what the white hat will say. Patent coach out there looks like he was having a little bit of a discussion. A little bit of a pleading session, it looked like. Still don't have the call here. They're backing up. It'll be a hold against Patton. Oh, face mask. Oh. Face mask against the Panthers. I thought I saw him indicate a hold there. Well, they're coming back, whatever it is. It's going to be back against Patton. If you've just joined us, 444 left in the second period. Blue Devils are up 14 to 8, and the spot is going to be the 35 yard line of the Blue Devils for the Patton Panthers. Ever which way it was, it went against Patton. That's important. <laughs> the big thing with Patton right now is what you're looking at is any confidence momentum here at home. Uh, if they keep answering us, this one could go all the way down to the wire. It could go down the last possession. You're exactly right. Because when we've scored, our defense has not exactly responded, at least in this possession, like you'd want them to. There's Rice rolling left. He's going to fake. He fires out in the flats. It's incomplete. Nobody there that no, time. Again, he rolling left and throwing against his body, but he does a pretty good job, at least as far as getting the ball out there. But couldn't find anybody there open. But uh, I'd like to see some pressure on him. Yeah, kind I mean, of rolling unpressured out there. Yeah, I mean, that's a difficult throw to make when you're rolling, throwing with your opposite arm from the direction you're going. You've got to open up, and it's hard to do sometimes. It's a lot harder to do with people in your face, though. Yeah. And we don't have them there. Well, we've seen the Blue Devil defense all season make some big stands, even in the red zone, even inside the five. And if they can pick it up tonight, give the offense some help. Uh, th this would help tremendously. You've got a timeout, looks like. We do have second down and 13, but it is a timeout. Charge to the Patton Panthers back after this. Hey, welcome to Oakey Taylor's beautiful downtown Brevard. If you haven't been here for a while, you got to stop by, man. You wouldn't believe what's going on here at Oakey Taylor's. 
It's amazing. We've got science. We've got trucks. And cars. We've got art. We've got art. That's perfect. This is the funnest thing ever. You can be just like catnip. And of course we've got games. So stop by and play with us at Opie Taylor soon. We're open seven days a week in Brevard, North Carolina. That was funny. Back to Brevard Blue Devil football on the Blue Devil Network as we are, our situation is we've got 420 left in the second period. Blue Devils are up 14 to eight. Patton has the football and has been driving. They have called timeout. And we're dealing right now, waiting to see what uh, they cook up with a young man who's playing quarterback for the first time. If you didn't, weren't here for the start of our broadcast, Patton's regular quarterback is quarantined. COVID situation, and it's kind of impacted the entire school, cheerleading staff, school faculty, uh, community. It's had a big effect over here listening to what they told us pregame, Danny. Yeah, but, uh, this backup quarterback, number 11, he certainly come in with confidence and He's an athlete. You can tell, I mean, he's he's typically a basketball player, but he's throwing the ball like he's done it before. He does. He's doing a good job. So it's second down now. There's the snap. He's back to throw. Again, he fakes, and he's, he's throwing it little... deep. Even it deep. Kessinger's up, and oh. Sammy should have had that yep. one, I think. Yep. He'll tell you he should have. Went right through his hands. Well, you know, that's one of those that, uh, you know, hands were up there. At, uh, fortunate there was no flag on that. Uh, it certainly hit him in the hands. He's going to want that one back. Yeah, could have either way there. I think Sammy might have been involved with the bumping and grinding there with number yeah. eight, Waylon Rutherford. But neither one were called for the pass interference. So we're looking at third down still and about 13 for the Patton Panthers. They're coming up in their Pisgah look-alike uniforms. If you're a longtime Blue Devil fan, you know what Pisgah looks like. Yeah. So sure. this is kind of what the Patton Panthers resemble. Rolling left. Here he goes. He's going to still look. He's going to keep it. Him. And he's going to get dropped short of the first down. He's going to gain down to, I think it's going to be now fourth down and about eight, I think, for the Panthers. Yeah, it looks like eight. And let's see. I don't know what they've got in the way of. They didn't. They went for the two earlier on their score where they've got anything that resembles a field goal kick or not, but that'd be a pretty long poke. To yeah. Well, and their punter sort of uh, mangled one earlier for about seven yards, so it looks like they're going to go for it here. They're going to yeah, go they for are. it. They are. Well, we're deep. It's, you know, Blue Devils need to stop here. Need some pressure on the quarterback. And here he goes rolling. We're still now. There, there we go. go. There we there go. There you go. And there's, he's still on his feet, but he's going to be finally dropped. Number one. And that is Caleb Jenkins on the stop, and he's going to be dumped around the 47-yard line. Tried to get away, tried to get away, and just couldn't get out of the grasp of Caleb Jenkins. That was a heck of a good play. It sure was. Exactly what we needed for that play, pressure in the young QB. Yeah, pressure came in from three directions on that play. They kept him in the middle of the field. Caleb was able to get him down and uh, turn over on downs. Great field position for the Blue Devils. 44 yard line will be the spot. They're on 44, Blue Devils. Now trying again to establish, keep that ground game going. And I'd like to see Griffin back in again. I don't know where he's been, Nishan, but he can take it to the house from here easily. Just a break yep. or two here or there. He's uh, he's a long distance threat. Well, I don't see him in there right now. And you got 323 left of the half and this will be a great momentum to go into the halftime. We get it in there's joe back to throw he's looking deep and he's firing deep down the sidelines that pass is wow. going to be up for grab he got it and caught he, he got it is that jake gravely <laughs> yeah jake gravely on the catch jake gravely wrestling it away a flag down back and we've got a flag again now yep, it's course. coming back it's going to be a hold <laughs> i tell you that must be the eighth or ninth big jake play gravely. that we've had uh canceled out well, he heaved that one. Joe heaved it, and Jake did a great job of wrestling it away, but yeah. it's coming back all for naught. I tell you. That's two TDs we've had called back, Jalen uh. Carver's and now Jake's. Of course, Jalen was responsible for calling his own back earlier, but that was just unfortunate for Jake Gravely. That was a heck of an effort. It sure was. Mm -mm -mm. Gosh, you hate to see that. Yeah, I'm tired of seeing it, to be frankly yeah. honest. It's happened all season long. Yeah, and you know, it's one thing to get a hold call, but it's another on a huge play like that was 
just punch in the gut. <laughs> Back to the 33-yard line, holding on the Blue Devils. Jake Gravely's fine play is nullified. There's Joe back to throw. He's firing out in the flats, and it's going to be caught by Swicegood. And he's going to jump, dive up over the 35 to about the 36-yard line. Kind of a safety valve look there. Garrett was – Joe was looking deep, first of all, but nothing there. So just a little flare out to the safety his safety valve kind of there with Garrett Swicegood. Yeah, he checked off his primary. He was covered pretty well and hit Garrett. Don't risk the interception. There's the handoff again, and that is going to be trying to see who that was. Was that Stockton? I'm looking too here. That looks like it was. I know it wasn't twice good. That was Nathan. Yep. Stockton, the ball that carrier. is Nathan Stockton on the carry. Dale, of course, uh, we've talked about him. What a story Absolutely. for him to come back. That's seeing a good him run in the right good there. Ground. He's back in there still. He's looking to block. There's a pass mm. deep. Overthrown, though. Joe. Unloading deep, but now Joe will have to punt again. We've got to do a better job of keeping the penetration out for our punting team right now. We Last time, Joe about got mangled. Yeah, well, they've got enough time here. We need to pin them back deep and certainly keep them from uh, putting any points on the board going into the half with 2.14 left in the second quarter. Well, their rush on the last punt was very effective, so we've got to close down and seal people off. Joe's back on his own 30. The punt so is the Devils are up 14 to 8. We've got 214 left in the second. Joe taking his time. There's a long, nice kick. Yeah. Fair, Fair catch, catch called down there by Waylon Rutherford, I Fair believe. And, and, and we eight. got golly, what is that? Uh, he, that's gonna be a personal foul against that's, the Blue Devils. That he, is not smart. Well, I mean he had a fair catch. It was a uh, dead ball, he just sort of Ran into him, not aggressively in my mind, but you still, no, but he, you can't hit him. Yeah, that is something that you know just can't do. That's just shooting yourself in the foot. Mm. Good grief! So that's going to go against the Blue Devils. Yeah, mental mistake there for sure. We've had a few of them tonight. Yeah, holding pass interference, calling back two touchdowns. And then two turnovers in the first half, first quarter rather. And we're not, you know, here we go again, 35-yard line. Pat will have it. What's going on sometimes with some of these kids? But anyway, 2:07. Let's buckle up, defense. We need to stop. Price. There's a snap, handoff inside. That's. Cantrell Vasquez, and he's going to be off the game. left side for a short game, Stockton and it's going to be Stockton on the stop about the 36-yard line. Well, Stockton's starting to get busy out there on defense and offense. That's good to see him uh, active and making some plays like we know he can do. So it'll be second down and about eight for the Patton Panthers coming up. Price, there's motion back to the right to right to left is. Long count. There's a snap, and Rice fires out. Oh, get your hands pass up. Pass is caught. Nice catch by number eight. Waylon Rutherford. Rutherford on the catch, and it's going to be third down now, and about Ball two, it looks like, the for the Patton Panthers. Third down. Gannon was dropping back into his zone. He turned his head. He might have gotten a hand on it. We need pressure on the QB again. There's a pass out in the flat again, and Kessinger slipped as number 15 made the catch, but he's going to be up to Sexton on the reception, and he's going to be up to about the Blue Devil 44-yard line, it looks like. Another first down for the Patton Panthers. Clock can't move fast enough for us, Danny. No, they're working that intermediate part of the field. Uh, out to the flat, well, right in the, the eight to ten yard zone, and they've been they've been pretty successful with it. Catching it, getting out of bounds, stopping the clock. Here's Rice again. There's a low snap. He picks it up. He's rolling left again. He fakes and throwing deep oh, down the sidelines. That one's up for grabs, and we're going to be it hit the ground. Yeah, think it hit the ground. Going to wait and see right. if there's a flag. Look like Joe Powell got pulled down. Yeah, that might have been a, a preventive uh, measure there by the offense because Joe was in position for it. He couldn't Johnson come up with it, though, so it's going to be still patent football. 
It looked like to me he got pulled down from behind. I don't know. I'd have to see that again. Yeah, that hit, ball was kind of a wounded duck. Yeah, it, was, it had a lot of uh, altitude on it, didn't it? It did, a lot of air under that one. <laughs> it's going to be the 44-yard line of the Blue Devils for the Patton Panthers as they're looking now at second down. There's the snap flag. to Rice, and we've got a flag. I think the play clock might have expired. Yeah, delay a game call. It is going to be delay a game. Delay of game against the Panthers. That'll back them up five. 57 seconds left in the second quarter. Blue Devils are up 14 to eight, trying to thwart this Panther effort to put one on the board before halftime. Well, we've seen, uh, we need to just shut this down, get into the half. We've seen the Blue Devils make some great adjustments at halftime, so let's knock this thing out. In a Second down and about 16 at this point. There's the snap. Low it's snap. low. Rice picks it up. He's rolling right, trying to get out of bounds. No, he didn't. He still got it, wrapping it up, up across the 50-yard line. Jacob Stockton on the tackle there. Panthers have called a timeout. We're going to stay with you as the Blue Devils going back to the side. Danny, if you got a minute, let's read our sponsor list again. Absolutely. And tonight's game is brought to you by Party UNC Healthcare, Comporium Communications, State Farm Agent Meredith Baldridge, Telco Community Credit Union, Fisher Realty, Taylor Made Chimney Service, Gordon Family Pharmacy, Brevard Auto Parts, Quezon Oil Company, Haywood EMC, Hunter Subaru, Charlie's Tire Center, Mac Heating and Air, Opie Taylor's in Brevard, Sully's Steamers of Brevard, and Mountain Real Estate. Thank you, my man. I appreciate that. It's yes, sir. Uh, Danny Hine helping me out. They call me at school the faculty fossil, and you're having to help out here. I have to have a lot of help there. So oh. it's, uh, it's really great to be uh, hanging out with you at this old age. Oh, you ain't fossilized yet now. I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm close. I'm uh. really about as close as you can get. But anyway, 49 seconds left in the second quarter as the Blue Devils are up 14-8, to eight, and this is a big, big play. Absolutely. In Blue Devil territory, there's the snap. Rice is rolling. Now he's, he's pumping. He's faking. Time. He's going to keep the ball, trying to get to the sidelines. And he does get out of bounds as I think uh, dragging him out for the Blue Devils was number nine. That was that was Jacob Stockton on that tackle. I tell you, this kid has, uh, has speed, athleticism. He um, can hold on to the ball, and he can be elusive downfield. I wonder where he played before he QB'd. What position? I know you were going to say Patton, but, you know. It's, <laughs> well, he played basketball. Uh, yeah, he did. I heard you say that. <laughs> He's a good kid. Yeah. Right, they're glad they're lucky to have he him got as good, a backup. Good hands, good sense about him. So it is time out. Be, well, as close as this is, Patton's going to take this one. We're going to take a time, a time out here. We will uh, stay with you because don't want to miss this exciting, important action at the end of this uh, first half. But the Blue Devils. Doing everything they can. We've done a good job at times, but it's just the old bugaboo of penalties and turnovers, and then a you know a dumb dumb penalty actually down there on that fair catch. But uh, that's over and done with. Haywood EMC though, proudly powering the needs of our community, bringing you the second quarter of action. We've told you about the live stream here on the Blue Devil Network. We're thankful to Ken and folks for bringing you the live stream. Uh, we're also thankful to WSQL and Tarina back at the station. That's 12:40 on your AM dial, 102 on your FM. WSQL, the home of Blue Devil football. So, Danny Hine, this is Lyndon Clayton. We're looking right now at a fourth down and about three. As huge fourth down here. Huge. As the Panthers are driving, they're back out of their timeout. There's the snap. It's low. Rice is rolling left. He's looking. He's firing across the middle. That pass is caught, and it's going to be dropped down. Waylon Rutherford on the catch as they're scrambling up to the line of scrimmage. First and 10 for the Blue Devils. The spot's going to be about their own 28-yard line. I mean, for Patton on the Blue Devil 28-yard line. Yeah, he was throwing under pressure. A good connection there. Certainly not what we wanted to see with 35 seconds clock running now. He throws well on the run. He sure it's does. Good. It's kind of an odd motion, but he sure does. Here he comes. He's rolling again. 
He's faking. He's back across the middle. He's still got the football, and he's going to turn his way him. into the end zone. We missed tackle after tackle, and he broke the plane, and he's in. So with 19 seconds left in the first half, the Patton Panthers are back on the board as the Panthers now looking right now to see what they're going to do with their PAT. Well, they went for two earlier. At, yeah, they were looking at 14-14 is what the scoreboard should show. It shows 11-14-11, but it's 14-14, and let's see what they're going to do. Uh, I think they're going to go for two again. Yep, looks that way. There's Rice. There's a snap. It's a little low. He bobbles it, and he's uh, we're all over that one. So we're going to go to the half, tied 14-14, it looks like. Of course, they do have to kick off to us, Danny, so we yeah. still could break one. They'll line drive that kick up the middle probably, but uh, love to see Nashawn Griffin get his hands on it. Yeah, I mean, we're going to see uh, likely a, um, sort of a squib kick up the middle, try to make it bounce around, looking for a turnover with 19 seconds left. But certainly uh, that young quarterback shed about four tackles getting into the end zone. Uh, you know, that's sort of been the story of these games is uh, we're getting to the runner, but we just can't get him to the ground. And you've got to not just hit him, but you've got to make him go all the way down here. And you it's got to uh, make it's, him pay the price. Yeah, it's fr it's he, frustrating that to watch. A, that kid made a good run, <laughs> but it sure is. If you're a Blue Devil fan, it is frustrating to say the least. So let's see if Griffin is back. We're going to probably see that thing kicked up front. Uh, Abram Justice is handled many kickoffs, as has Jackson Burgess for the Blue Devils. So we'll see what happens here as Patton will kick off. 19 seconds left in the first half, tied 14-14 right now. There's that kick up the middle, and it's going to be picked up by Abram Justice. He's going to try to run his way upfield. Abram is going to be brought down, though, around the 38-yard line. So let's see if we've got time for one heave. Got to be careful on this, though, because sometimes you can uh, you really do. do something out of desperation and turn it into something that's uh, certainly not in intended. 38-yard line, their own 38 for the Blue Devils. Joe Powell is back in. I'd like to see Joe go out, maybe Burgess throw to Joe. Yeah, I mean, you know, something Joe like that. But I think they're just going to down it. You see where Swicegood is right now. I think yep. we're going to take a knee. There's the snap. Joe does take a knee. So we're going to the half. Tied 14-14 here on the Blue Devil Network. So we're back for our halftime show following these words. Back after this. Every cheer for every play, we know there's a little prayer that no one gets hurt. That's why we are there, too party athletic trainers, physicians, and specialists. We're watching closely for any sign that someone needs care. And if your child is hurt, they're seen right away by the region's top specialists. The party sports medicine team is at every game, match, race, practice, and workout, providing medical attention and guidance. For us, winning is all about playing healthy and smart so you can perform at your best. Progress is an internet connection that matches your love of what's on it. Progress is not being able to remember what a loading bar looks like. Progress is Wi-Fi coverage that actually covers every room in your home. Progress moves at up to one gig speeds, has no data caps, and comes with 24-7 tech support. Comporium. Always ready. Hunter Subaru is proud to be your hometown dealer. For over 80 years, we supported you as much as you have supported us. As your hometown dealer, we give you two years of no-cost maintenance with every new Subaru. Come see us right down the road in Fletcher off Airport Road or online at huntersubaru.com. At Hunter Subaru, we're celebrating. Our new state-of-the-art facility on Hunter Airport Drive in Fletcher is open for business. That's right, we moved. Stop by our new location between the Ag Center and Broadmoor Golf Course just across from the Asheville Airport. See you soon or online at huntersubaru.com.
For almost 50 years, Charlie's Tire and Automotive Center in Brevard has been your one-stop shop for new tires and auto repairs. You can always expect competitive prices on new tires like Cooper and Michelin, services like computer balancing, flat tire repairs, and tire rotations. Auto repairs include brakes, wheel alignments, exhaust systems, transmission, steering, and suspensions. They also do state inspections, oil changes, and much more. Charlie's Tire and Automotive Center in Brevard, your first stop for new tires and auto repair. Hey, Transylvania folks, Harris Hardware in downtown Brevard is your number one hometown hardware store for all your everyday needs all the time starting right now. Harris Ace Hardware has all the things you need to make life easier on their shelves when you need it now. No waiting a couple of days, they have it right now. And guess what? Advice is free. Shop Harris Hardware Main Street in Brevard. Welcome back to Brevard Blue Devil Football. We're at halftime here at Patton High School in beautiful Burke County. And we've got an extended halftime show. The band's going to do something here for the Patton Panthers. So uh, and we're not, not only, Danny, going to talk about some big plays in the first half. We're going to show you also on our live stream. So Ken's available to set those up for us, said he would. And then we're going to have another special uh, segment that Ken's done on our athletic trainer. Yeah, so we, you know, we're in the half, uh, 14 to 14. So it's a all, all new ball game, second half, and we've, you know, seen the first half that's, uh, you know, penalties and misfortunes. But let's look at some of these touchdowns here. Yeah, that's uh, Cantrell Vasquez, the young man with a hyphenated last name. He's in there again. We've a big hole opened up, and he ripped his way through it. And then this is going to be uh, another time. Here's Joe on that keep. This is a tremendous play by Joe. Yeah, you see that seam open up. Uh, good blocks on that, but uh, he read that Joe well. Joe Powell taking it to the house. So that was Brevard's first score following two turnovers and a touchdown pass from Burgess to Carver that was called back for offensive pass interference. Here we go again via replay. And there's Joe and there's Caleb Jenkins. Here goes the big rumbler taking it to the house for the Blue Devils. Well, you couldn't, I couldn't see the number, but he got a good downfield block on that by one of the wide receivers, which they tend to do good discipline not to get a hold call, too. And then here comes the one that I didn't want to see. Here comes the young man, the quarterback, Rice. And look at the missed tackles. One, two. One. Three. Uh, two. Two or three. There's a, definitely a missed tackle as he powers his way into the end zone. So, we, you know, we just got to be – open and honest about this that last touchdown was his effort and our poor tackling yeah i mean you know he certainly is uh, is an athlete and you get out there in the open field and and he's got quickness but you got to tackle him and that's uh, certainly didn't work out for us on that play so i know we'll recalibrate at halftime we get the ball coming out of the gate uh, want to see us uh, be able to sustain a drive and get back on the board because you said it earlier towards the beginning of the second quarter. Uh, this might come down to the last possession, which we've had happen to us a couple of games, uh, certainly in that Robbinsville game uh, first out. And then we've uh, had that, I think it was, uh, I don't remember if it was Asheville or Irwin, where we had to sort of try to fight back in the last couple minutes. But, uh, you know, we've got the tools. We've just got to execute. Of course, that touchdown pass uh, with the with the hold, that was, uh, I could just sense the, um, air coming out of the balloon a little bit after that. Yep. And we will be kicking off to start the third quarter. Well, that's we, right. We You're right. Safe, so, you know, I've got to keep you straight. <laughs> I'm doing the best I, I can. I get it's it confused hard. every once it's in a really, while. really, hard. Well, anyway, <laughs> speaking of people who contribute a lot, we're going to look at a segment that Ken and company have of about six or seven minutes on our fine athletic trainers. We'll do that after these words from our fine sponsors. Time. Right here. Come on, man. Hey, I think I'll take the day off. Is your old furnace talking back to you? You're flying solo today, pal. I need a little me time. Mac Heating and Air Conditioning can repair your grumpy old furnace or replace it with a new high efficiency Linux system. <sighs> yeah, sorry. I just can't seem to move any air today. 
We'll see about that. Get a dependable Linux system from Mac Heating and Air Conditioning and start saving today. Linux. Air is life. Make it perfect. Every cheer for every play, we know there's a little prayer that no one gets hurt. That's why we are there too. Party athletic trainers, physicians, and specialists. We're watching closely for any sign that someone needs care. And if your child is hurt, they're seen right away by the region's top specialists. The party sports medicine team is at every game, match, race, practice, and workout, providing medical attention and guidance. For us, winning is all about playing healthy and smart so you can perform at your best. Progress is an internet connection that matches your love of what's on it. Progress is not being able to remember what a loading bar looks like. Progress is Wi-Fi coverage that actually covers every room in your home. Progress moves at up to one gig speeds, has no data caps, and comes with 24-7 tech support. Comporium. Always ready. Hunter Subaru is proud to be your hometown dealer. For over 80 years, we supported you as much as you have supported us. As your hometown dealer, we give you two years of no-cost maintenance with every new Subaru. Come see us right down the road in Fletcher off Airport Road or online at huntersubaru.com. At Hunter Subaru, we're celebrating. Our new state-of-the-art facility on Hunter Airport Drive in Fletcher is open for business. That's right, we moved. Stop by our new location between the Ag Center and Broadmoor Golf Course just across from the Asheville Airport. See you soon or online at huntersubaru.com. Almost 50 years, Charlie's Tire and Automotive Center in Brevard has been your one-stop shop for new tires and auto repairs. You can always expect competitive prices on new tires like Cooper and Michelin, services like computer balancing, flat tire repairs, and tire rotations. Auto repairs include brakes, wheel alignments, exhaust systems, transmission, steering, and suspensions. They also do state inspections, oil changes, and much more. Charlie's Tire and Automotive Center in Brevard, your first stop for new tires and auto repair. Hey, Transylvania folks, Harris Hardware in downtown Brevard is your number one hometown hardware store for all your everyday needs all the time starting right now. Harris Ace Hardware has all the things you need to make life easier on their shelves when you need it now. No waiting a couple of days, they have it right now. And guess what? Advice is free. Shop Harris Hardware Main Street in Brevard. Tell us a little bit about your role as an athletic trainer and some of your background and, and tra specific training. Okay, so just a little bit about, about my background. I got my bachelor's from Western Carolina University, and that's where I did a lot of clinical rotations with the college level, high school level, and also private school level. And then I went on and got my master's from the University of South Carolina, and then that's where I worked with the South Carolina athletics and then also an, another private school. And so just a little about athletic training and what we do. Athletic trainers are healthcare providers that um, provide orthopedic evaluations, um, treatments, we do rehab, for our student athletes. Uh, we also do emergency care when needed, especially at practices and game days. And then also we help stay in constant or, co or contact with our physicians. And um, so if a student has to be sent, we can uh, have a team approach and know what the team or the uh, treatment plan is for that student athlete. So how do you specifically support Brevard High School athletics? So for Brevard, what we do is I uh, usually get here a little before school lets out. You know, we get things ready so when the students come in, they're ready for their treatments and their um, rehab. So when the school does get out, they come down. We'll have some that get taped to be uh, preventative for any ankle sprains or um, 
wrist sprains, whatever, whatever they need there. And then also they'll come in and they can get uh, looked at for any injuries they either had that day or the previous day and we'll do an evaluation. And then we'll also do some treatments and we'll get them doing some uh, rehab. So we'll get them in the weight room doing some stuff with me or we'll do it in our treatment room such as band work and stuff like that to get them back healthier and stronger um, to participate in their sport. So you're able actually with certain levels of injury you can diagnose and treat yes. and you have certain equipment here. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so certain injuries like uh, sprains, strains, you know, concussions, um, uh, just a, a variety of things we can diagnose and treat. And then, you know, for our treatments here, a lot of it, you know, you know, it may just be they're tight. You know, they need a they need a stretch or we'll do rehab such as strengthening. Um, and we can do that again. We have a bunch of bands. We have uh, weights in the weight room. Um, and so we, we make a, a treatment plan for that if that's needed. And then also we have um, for concussions, we do a diagnosis and treatment and we take them through what's called a SCAT and we can do their baseline testing and everything here as well. And, and of course you have the, the full spectrum of party resources yes. behind you so if yes. you needed any backup or if you needed to refer for any other services yeah. you have all of those elements. Uh, yeah right that available. is one thing we can call and um, get them in if we need to get, us, get them seen right away at the um, with a physician or an urgent care or even with our uh, um, physical therapist as well. How has the athletic training um, profession in, in your uh, short time frame changed and what do you foresee in the future? Yeah, so one thing when athletic training first came about, it was just a person that helped out with first aid and just the general maintenance of the sports team. You didn't have to have any license or, or schooling or anything like that. But now um, and today you have to have a, it's an actual health care provider. They are um, board certified. They have a state license. Um, and also now it's required to have a master's degree in sports medicine without or with doing multiple clinical rotations to build up your hours and get that experience. What are the uh, most difficult injuries to diagnose in your experience? Um, I would say in my experience for mainly the contact sports would be more of a shoulder injury, maybe like a labral tear, knees, you'll see more of a, a ligament, meniscus, stuff like that, um, are going to be the bigger injuries. They may not be fully hard to diagnose when you actually get through your evaluation, but those will be the biggest ones that we'll see right now. Mm -hmm. And tell us a little bit about the concussion protocol. I know that the, there's very strict guidelines yes. related to do the state, but uh, how do you manage those? So yeah, so the state of North Carolina has a concussion uh, law, and so it's called the Geffler-Waller Concussion Act. And under the state law, it uh, shows that um, as athletic trainers, we can evaluate and diagnose a concussion. And once a student has been diagnosed with a concussion, you know, they'll be held out so that they have enough time to rest and um, for healing. And then once they're asymptomatic, which means they have no symptoms for 24 hours, we start what's called the return to play protocol. And that's a five phase protocol. And so it's slowly working them back into activity. So like the first day may be walking um, and then it's running and running. And then the next, the fourth day is like a non-contact and then a full contact. And once they're done with their protocol, they have to get seen at least once by the physician and get cleared so that they can be uh, returned to sports saying that they have no uh, limitations or anything. But also under the state law, they have what's called a return to learn. And so we um, work as again with as, as a team with our school, working with the school counselors, the school nurse to provide accommodations while they're in school in class you know so if they're symptomatic they may not be able to work fully to their best doing their schoolwork or tests or quizzes and stuff like that. So. And I think that's an important um, element to what your profession does is really enhancing yeah. not only the safety of the student on the field but really their capacity to learn in the classroom mm -hmm. yeah. and pulling all those elements together so that's uh, really uh, a profound service that you're yeah. providing to these yeah. youngsters. So it's so. a team effort. Yeah very good. <laughs>you know, there's a lot of folks that uh, have played and experienced Blue Devil football, and that's why these games are so fun, and we take such pride in them. I mean, they, you know, there's a lot of folks that uh, connect directly or indirectly one way or another, and certainly this this season has been a challenge, uh, but we're out on the field, and, and uh, that's why I look so forward to these games 
you know, it's really a sense of community and family, and heck, it's a lot of fun. And regardless, uh, you know, we'd love to win and compete and play uh, smash mouth football, but there's a lot of people involved, and uh, to me, that's exciting. Well, speaking of fandom and tradition, you said you thought you saw when we were getting out of the your truck coming in that uh, Moby Sorrells was here tonight. Yeah. That's the ultimate fan of yeah. Brevard High football. And if he is, I'm certainly glad to see that he was able to make it. I didn't see him because with my vision, you know, I, I looked around, but there you said that he was coming in in the golf cart, I believe. Well, I, 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 I'm pretty sure it was him. It was sort of off in the distance, and I looked, and, and you know, he's, he's one of our longstanding. I mean, he goes back uh, uh, decades as a Blue Devil fan, and we honored him uh, several years ago at halftime. Uh, and he, he had seen, uh, I don't remember how many straight games it was, but it was a, a phenomenal number. Such an honor to get to uh, see him out there and get presented a Blue Devil football at halftime. So I believe he's out here, and if he is, uh, he can put some good vibes on the Blue Devils, and we can turn this thing around. He's seen a lot. In fact, people don't realize what a good player he was in his day. Actually, back in his day, Danny, they had something in Western North Carolina called the Optimist Bowl. And that was the all-star game for Western North Carolina. And uh, he was in that game. Huh. He played in that game. I remember talking to him many times in the past when he played in it. Former Brevard high head coach Carol Ladies White played in it. I think maybe Bud Bishop, who was from Brevard, may have played in that also. But that was big back in the early 50s. The Optimist Bowl played over in Asheville. And Moby Sorrells played in it. He was a tremendous high school football player. Well, I, mean, I grew up next to Carol Wright. He was my uh, next door neighbor, and uh, he certainly uh, was uh, part of the Blue Devil tradition here. And uh, back in the '70s, I'm not sure what t uh, year his uh, he came in. He came in the same year I came back to Brevard, which was the fall of '74, and he coached at Brevard, I think, for about four years. Later, coached also at West Henderson and at Pisgah, uh, Hall of Fame, Western North Carolina Hall of Fame member, also did a great job with the Blue Devils, uh, as have several others. You know, look at Cliff Brookser won a championship, state championship back in around 1960. Frank Robinson, your coach, Absolutely. winning a state championship. So, Brevard's had yeah. tradition. Yeah, that was 82 with that fine group. And uh, so it's just been Something this year has kind of been an anomaly, but it's still not too late if we could get our act together and win this week and the next two weeks. I mean, it's, you know, improbable, but not impossible. You're absolutely right. And they, you know, that's that's the thing. I mean, Hendersonville has won every game except one. I think they lost to Daniel. You know, they can be knocked off their perch. I mean, nothing in this high school level is impossible. And if these guys play inspired, like I've seen them play and what they're capable of, I mean, they can be in contention and win any game. It's just a matter of harnessing that, finding some leadership, some enthusiasm, and a sense of urgency and really coming out and playing football, it it can be done. And uh, we'll see, I think, a different team here. I know they make uh, they have great sort of adjustments at halftime, and we'll see what they dial up. Defense needs to come out. I always say it. They need to come out swinging. They need to come out swinging hard. Swinging hard, and anybody can lose. A witness Alabama. Yeah, what a game. <laughs> yeah, witness Alabama. We talked about that earlier. But, uh, you know, you're looking right now at uh, uh, right now uh, an opportunity starts right now. I mean, the season's here. This is – people don't realize it, but uh, these last couple of quarters, if we lose this ball game, our season's pretty much over. Well, it certainly makes it a, uh, a steep slope decline. Uh, things can happen. But, uh, you know, let's see who else we've got tonight. Uh, we, you mentioned it. Um, we've got – Looks like Polk and Chase. That's a big game. Uh, going tonight. And then um, who else? I think everybody else is open. Next week on the 22nd, of course, we play Hendersonville at homecoming. Chase is going to be playing Patton. I'm looking at my grid here. You like how I did that? I did. That's it's good. pretty impressive, isn't it? That is. Uh, Chase and Patton, I think, is going to be a good matchup. And the RS Central uh, and Chase are going to play on October 29th, and that's another key lineup for the conference so you know still a lot of tough games for all the teams involved you know hendersonville i think at this point certainly has the advantage because uh, they've got Patton the last game out and i'm you know that's going to be 
a, a miracle if Patton were able to pull that one off. But, you know, we've got a half to go, two quarters to come out and uh, put this one to the test here. Well, our halftime show has been brought to you by Dan and Donna Hodges at Mountain Real Estate. We thank them for their sponsorship. And the Blue Devils are back out on the field. Haven't seen Patton. They're just now coming out right now. As, like I said, the Blue Devils will kick off to start the third quarter. We're going to stay here with you because don't want to miss anything here. This is big, Danny, the second half of the season. And the second half of this game is the season. Yeah, well, Blue Devils are already out there lining up to kick, and uh, Patton just got on the field, and they're going to have to get out there in a hurry. Uh, so I'm let's see if we can catch them off guard a little bit. They didn't. Well, a long halftime, and I have seen teams in years past penalized for not getting out on time. So, like that would have, you know, that's not going to happen now. They're, they're there. But Ethan Huggins has teed it up, and he's going to kick off as the Panthers. I hear the Panther growl in the background. Ethan Huggins will kick off to begin the second half. Huggins will kick. 14-14 our score. Here we go to start the third quarter. Huggins with that kick. It's down to the sidelines high, and it is caught and fair caught down around the 33-yard line uh, of the Panthers. So, so Panthers will begin their strive first and 10 on their own 33-yard line, I think it is. And we just started the third quarter as the Blue Devils now defensively coming back out. And I'd like to see a quick turnover, quick score, something to deflate any confidence that Patton heads coming out of the gate at halftime. Yeah, we need a big push on that defensive line and, uh, you know, start knocking some heads around, get some helmet on helmet, and hear some noise up here too. Well, we've got – Rice has done a good job. We've got to give him some something to look at. We've got to get in his face basically. Uh, a lot of penetration, a lot of push from our defensive line. There's a handoff inside to Smith. And he's getting around the left side, and he's cutting it out of bounds right in front of the Blue Devil bench on the sidelines. But that was a good run. Yeah, I, fortunately, uh, the boundary was our defender on that play. A lot of push from our defensive was, line. Uh, threatening to There's go a handoff field, inside to yeah, Smith. He's up to about the he's getting around the left line. side, enough for a and first he's cutting down. it out of bounds right in front of the Blue Devil first down for bench the on the sidelines. Panthers, they're coming but that out. was a good run. Smith carried a nice, nice run by him. We've got... People have got to get to the football, and then they've got to explode into people when they get there, and we're not doing it thus far. But it's early here in the third quarter. Here comes Rice to the right side, just rolling. He's tucked it, and we've there got go. to him this time. That's Abram Justice. Flag. They're going to flag him. It's going to be a horse collar. Yep, I believe they horse collar. That's going to be that's going to be a horse collar, personal foul on Abram Justice. So we do show some aggression, but it is not of the legal nature. Well, they flushed him outside. Uh, Abram was in position. He, he was inside of the runner, so he had to reach for him. And unfortunately, his hands landed on the It collar. did. It's going to be the 46-yard line of the Blue Devils, first and 10 for the Patton Panthers. We're just underway here in the third period. Our game is tied 14-14. And there's Rice at quarterback again. He's looking to the sidelines again, that system of probably the offensive coordinators. I'd like to see somebody use old play cards. I don't see anybody do that anymore. There's a handoff to Smith. He there bounces outside. That's a good tackle. Coming up was Stockton, I believe, on the tackle. Yep. Got him low. Well, that's where it counts. You know, he was Just able to get him down yeah. some way. You have to shoot him. <laughs> that was a great open field tackle, though. Got him around uh, the ankles and prevented him from turning it. That's turning up field. Loss of about a yard. Going to be second down and 11. Spot is going to be about the Blue Devil 47-yard line. And it is going to be, let's see what we've got. Rice back in there again. Twins to this side. Also kind of a wing back to this side. Heavily loaded to the right side. And here he comes. He's rolling. He's looking. And he's firing out. Passes complete to Whalen. Number eight. Rutherford. Rutherford's the name. When I hear Whalen, I just stop. <laughs> yeah, great catch again in that same spot of the field behind the linebackers in front of the safeties. That kid throws the ball well. If he's their backup, I wonder their their starter must be pretty good. Yeah, he's he's showing a great arm. He's throwing under pressure, and again, he's hitting that uh, sort of zone, intermediate zone where they're getting a good pickup. First and ten on about the 27-yard line of the Blue Devils. 
Rice back in, they're in at quarterback. We've got wide receiver to the left side, wide receiver right. Now there's some shifting. Everybody's going left, and it's going to be handed back off inside. And that, I believe, is Vasquez. Vas Vasquez, Vasquez yeah, he's uh, got a hyphenated last name. Uh, young man, I don't want to mispronounce it too often, but he, it is kind of hard to pronounce. So we just call him runner. Vasquez, but he can run. Yeah, he's a good runner, and that they've certainly gone to him quite a few few times tonight. Five yards on that play brings up look like uh, looks like a second and five. Second down and about five, like you said. The spot is going to be around the 23-yard line or so. They're knocking on the door again in our territory, almost in the red zone. There's a snap and going to pitch to the left side, and we're there, there we this time. Smith has stopped short. So we read that really well. Yeah, great read on the play. Linebackers coming up, uh, defensive lineman. It's like a timeout called. No, there's a flag down. Back judge, see it around the uh, 20 Well, he's, 20 talk, he's consulting with our people, so it looks like it's going to be against them. Likely a hold. Well, right. personal foul. It's going to go against Patton anyway. Personal, personal foul, foul against the Panthers. So we're going to back it up. Yeah, we'll take it. We need it. I didn't see anything, but uh, certainly we'll take that. Well played well, by what the defense. The, the, you know, the discussion is about because you have to take this penalty. There's just no doubt about it. And it is coming back to yeah. about the 40-yard line. Great break for the Blue Devils on that. Great, we, we that is that. great break for the Blue Devils. You're right about that. You listen to Blue Devil football on the Blue Devil Network live stream. There's Bryce. He's heaving it deep again down the sidelines looking for young man number eight, and he goes up and grabs it. Sammy Kessinger went up with him, but he couldn't pull it down. That's Rutherford. Another connection. Ball's lobbed high in the air, and he goes up and rebounds it down. Well, you know, he's got the height advantage on Sammy. I mean, yeah, Sammy did. is in position, but when uh, this guy is sort of, I don't know. Kind of boxed him out in the process, too. Yeah. yeah, that's the way you teach kids to rebound. 13-yard line, first and 10 for the Panthers. Yeah, he turned, came back to the ball, went straight up to it. There's a handoff back to Smith again. He spins back inside. A lot of blue double tacklers there down around the 10-yard line. Yeah, well, sometimes you can over-pursue, and I think on that play we had one player coming in at too sharp an angle. He was able to shed that one block, and fortunately it was a short pickup. I think I heard somebody down there say that Mr. Rutherford was the conference player of the year in Hoopville, and this young man can get up, that's for sure. Yeah. I bet he's a heck of a rebounder, too. That was a great play. Got a flag and down. Got a flag again. And the way we're backing up, I think this is on us. The offsides on the defense. Yep. That's going to spot it down to about the six yard line, it looks like. Second down, about two. So the Blue Devils again, another bad penalty, Danny. Yeah, I mean, again, the discipline, you're talking about uh, shooting yourself in the foot. That's another one. There's the snap. Rice back to throw. He pump fakes, and he's going to take it. He's cut it back up again, just like he did earlier, but this he time he didn't cross, didn't cross the goal line, so he's going to be down, though, knocking on Heaven's door he's down there. The At the one. Yeah, he's close. So it's first and goal, and they're coming up under center for the first time tonight. So that's going to be kind of a push there, and he's not going to make it right there. He was stopped right before the time he took the snap. He was standing up. Quarterback sneak did not work there for them, so be second and goal still around the two-yard line. Tried to catch us off guard there, Danny. We did a good job. Yeah, we've seen this defense uh, make a few goal line stands, and if we ever needed one, it's now. We do. We've got 7-11 and counting in the third period, tied 14-14. I mean, so, they, they, we haven't had a possession yet. 
So we no, we haven't, and we are looking right now back in the pistol look. There's a snap. It's high to Vasquez Cantrell, and Shut we're going to drop we go. him. Okay. It helped that the snap was high to the Vasquez. Young man took the, had to get up a little bit for it, kind of lost his momentum by having to jump, I think. Right. Good play by the defense on that. Our third quarter of action here tonight. I'm sorry to say I'd go over some of the sponsors, but I don't have my sheet in front of me, Danny. You'll have to help me in a minute. Oh, yep, I got you. We'll get, get him in a minute. I don't want to miss this play. Yeah, huge play here, third down and short. About three to the goal. Rice back there. There's a snapping in. He's rolling right, and he's going to fire out in the flats, and that pass is caught. That is touchdown, I believe, Smith on the catch, and he slips down on the track. Trevor Smith, Trevor Smith on the reception. Quarterback roll right and decided to throw. No flags on the play. Panthers on the board, 2014 now, 614 left in the third. So a long, time-consuming drive to start the third period for the Patton Panthers. That was a long drive, and Smith caught that, you know, cutting out towards the bound, right side boundary of the end zone, caught it on the fly. It was really a great nice catch. Nice catch. It really was. Here's a two-point conversion, and there's Rice rolling left, and he's going to be Tackling. hit and dropped. So that could loom large down the line as the two-point PAT is no good, and our score was 6-14 left in the third period. Patton 20, Blue Devils 14. Back after this. Hey, you think I'll take the day off? Is your old furnace talking back to you? You're flying solo today, pal. I need a little me time. Mac Heating and Air Conditioning can repair your grumpy old furnace or replace it with a new high-efficiency Linux system. <sighs> yeah, sorry. I just can't seem to move any air today. We'll see about that. Get a dependable Linux system from Mac Heating and Air Conditioning and start saving today. Linux. Air is life. Make it perfect. Progress isn't just about knowing where you came from. It's also about knowing where you want to go. Progress is as big as the Carolina communities we serve and as small as the living rooms we're welcomed into. It's about treating customers as friends because in most cases, that's exactly what they are. Comporium, always ready. Stream and WSQL, 12.40 a.m., 102.1 in your FM dial, and the Patton Panthers have gone up 2014, and there's a kick out of bounds. So it's going to be the Blue Devils will take the football around that spot as the Blue Devils get a long uh, start of the third quarter. Patton had the football, and a time-consuming drive results in a pass from Rice to Smith for the score for the Patton Panthers, and now our Blue Devils trail 20-14. to 14 in a game that we just can't lose, Danny. Right, and that certainly ate a lot of time off the clock. And now, you know, here we are in a situation down by six with six minutes and 14 seconds left in the third. We don't have the luxury of long drives. I mean, we've got to punch this one in and then come back and put another six or seven on the board to keep this thing competitive. And some Burgess is back in at quarterback, I think, too, Danny. Maybe with yep Jenkins beside him. I don't uh-huh. know that. Or, I don't know if that's Sean Griffin. But that's Caleb. Caleb. There's Ansem back to throw. He fires sideline pass is incomplete. Ansem Burgess throwing a bullet down the sideline, tended for Carver. That ball was chunked. That had some uh, mustard on it. Didn't had it? some steam. <laughs> Ansem Burgess got a good arm. He does. He can but get the ball out there job. quickly. Yeah. The problem you're looking at right now, again, if you're just tuning in, no Kyle Lovett tonight for the Blue Devils. That's hurt. Oh, yeah. Well, that's a, you know, he's a big part of the equation. I mean, he's a leading receiver. Absolutely uh, feeling that tonight. Miss him on special teams. Miss him all the way around. But here's Burgess again at quarterback. He's dropping back, rolling right. He's firing out in the flats, and that pass is incomplete. Intended for Sammy Kessinger, so we're looking at third and ten right now, following the two incomplete passes. Well, he's he's got a uh, he's got a different throwing motion than Joe. He certainly can get the ball downfield with some velocity. Brings a bit bit of a different style, but like you said, um, Kyle has been 
sure hands throughout the season and, and not having him tonight is having an impact. It sure has. Well, this is a big third and ten. Two incomplete passes have stopped the clock, but there's Anson back to throw. He's looking. He's firing across the middle. That pass wow. is caught by Jalen Carver. Looking for flags. Don't see any. This time Carver's in that? the end zone. How about that? That was a rocket yes, Anson sure Burgess was. threw. Well, I think that was the same play that uh, he got the offensive uh, push on called against him. Great play. He caught this one. Yeah. Took it in. Great play. Anson Burgess to Jalen Carver on a big third and ten play. Blue Devils now have tied this with 5.51 left in the third period. I was a little worried about that third and ten there after two incomplete passes, but Anson Burgess doing a great job. And now this extra point could be big. Here's Ethan Huggins in the sophomore to kick the PAT. Sammy Kessinger, I think, is holding. There's the snap, and it gets away from Sammy, and he could not go down with it. And there again is the loss of Kyle Lovett again coming into play. He's normally yeah. our place kicker holder. So we're tied at 20, 551 left in the third period. We're back after this. Hey, welcome to Opie Taylor's in beautiful downtown Brevard. If you haven't been here for a while, you got to stop by, man. You wouldn't believe what's going on here at Opie Taylor's. It's amazing. We've got science. We've got trucks. And cars. We've got art. We've got art. That's perfect. This is the funnest thing ever. You can be just like catnip. And of course, we've got games. So stop by and play with us at Opie Taylor soon. We're open seven days a week in Brevard, North Carolina. That was funny. Blue Devil football here on the Blue Devil Network. This is Lyndon Clayton with Danny Hine, and Blue Devils have just scored but couldn't convert the PAT, couldn't get the snap down. So we're tied at 20 with 5.51 left. There's well, a kick. kick. Kick, get on it. He got it. We did. Jacob Stockton, I think, is well on executed. top of it. Yes. Well executed onside kick. Caught Patton completely by surprise. And that's a great play. Whoever called that, kudos. Yeah, that uh, – that, I, I didn't see that coming, and we – They've done it a couple times this year unsuccessfully. That ball was kicked about as well as you can do it on an onside kick. And so you got to have great hands, and uh, Stockton was there to scoop it up. The officials are conferring. I don't know what they're talking about, but they've that's got an ominous look about it, Danny. Not only that, it's foreboding. And it looks bad, too. <laughs> sure, but I thought that was a well-executed it onside. It was. I don't know what they're talking about. Okay. No, they, they're not. Go. I guess they're just trying to determine whether it went the necessary yardage, but I, mean, I know it did. Yeah. Because there's the 40 and there's the 50, you know. So right. Got to go 10. I can do that so math. That's good. 47-yard <laughs> line, our spot. Is that Joe Powell back in mm -hmm. now? Joe's tossing the option. There's a the pass or the Nishan. option outside to Nishan Griffin. Finally, Nishan's seen a little bit more action since his start early in the ball game. I don't know where he's been. I know he – might have been dinged up. Well, he picked up a good, uh, looks did. like six. About of, six yards. Yeah. Second down and four. We've got an injured player out. Again, it looks like might be cramps again. With the warm weather, we've still had cramps, and this is two weeks, two weeks after tonight left in the regular season. Yeah, it's been a warm October for sure, and uh, I think it's supposed to get a little chilly this weekend, but uh, certainly hasn't been. We've had well, a little bit of cool night. That is Cantrell Vasquez. Uh oh, that's down. Of, that's yeah. one of their primary running backs we talked about. Well, if you got a second, go ahead and read our list of sponsors. If oh, you... sure. Tonight's third quarter well, of the game. Let's just say the game is brought to you by Party UNC Healthcare, Comporium Communications, State Farm Agent Meredith Baldridge, Telco Community Credit Union, Fisher Realty, Taylor Made Chimney Service, Gordon Family Pharmacy, Brevard Auto Parts, Quezon Oil Company. Haywood EMC, Hunter Subaru, Charlie's Tire Center, Mac Heating and Air, O.P. Taylor's in Brevard, Sully Steamers of Brevard, and Mountain Real Estate. Well, thank you. And again, a reminder, I'll let you know a little bit about, uh, along with the radio broadcast, we are live video streaming Brevard High School football games called the Blue Devil Network. Whether you're in the stands, at home, or anywhere, you can watch every play live by going to the BHS Blue Devils Brevard Blue Devil Football Facebook page. 
you'll find a post about the live stream with a link to click on. You can do that on your smartphone, your tablet, your laptop, or your computer. And remember, if you miss the live broadcast, the video stream production will also be broadcast tape delayed Sunday night, 6 p.m. on Comporium Cable TV Channel 102. Special thanks to Party UNC Healthcare, Southeastern Sports Medicine, and Orthopedics for bringing this new technology to you where the Blue Devils now have the football. And it is going to be, the spot is going to be about the 42-yard line. Well, got to take advantage of that onside kick. Second down about four. There's a high snap, but Joe's got it. There's a handoff. No, again, there he goes again. again. Look at that. Look at Joe. Joe Powell at rumbling. Go, baby, go. Running. Joe Powell's in the end Holy zone. Holy cow. Joe Powell with another great run. <laughs> That's going to make the highlight reel. That is a great run. <laughs> Well, yeah. you see how well he sold that again? He does. He's done it three or four times tonight. Faked you and me both out. Yeah. Here we got a replay of it if you're watching. This is something else on the live stream. Joe Powell's had three awesome runs tonight. Yeah, he sure had. Look at that spin move. <laughs> I tell you what, that's why as a receiver he's such a threat because he can really run with the football following catching it because that's where he started the season until Anson Burgess was hurt. But. Well, Anyway, come on, Nathan, or Ethan, kick this one through. Offside, uh, offside a big yep. time. Oh, he was. That was Waylon Rutherford with a hefty head start. Waylon was way back there. And it's going to be uh, now. They may look at going for two since they're going to move it up. Yeah, you got to wonder. Uh, don't look like they're going to do it. Uh, you know, Coach Pritchett might be considering. I don't know. They like Ethan's done a good job. But you hate to, you know, this situation. They're going to decline it to keep the distance. So here comes Ethan Huggins. Let's see if we can get this spot down right now. This is a call to timeout. Let's see what's going on. Maybe they had it spotted for the penalty. I don't know. So here we go. Sammy Kessinger again to hold. He's not your regular holder. There's a snap. He gets it down. And we've missed that one. No, we no, didn't. No, he got it through. Absolutely. To the left corner. I thought it was missed. Yeah. Well, good job, Ethan. I don't want to discredit you. Great job. So the Blue Devils up 27-20 with 5.54 left in the third. We are back after this. Well, I thought he had missed that. Some things cannot wait a few days to get fixed, and that is where Harris Ace Hardware makes things happen. That's right, get the things you need now at Harris Hardware Main Street in Brevard. They have a huge inventory to make your shop a one-stop experience with easy parking in the back. Come by Harris Hardware Main Street in Brevard like others have done since back in 1972. That's Harris Hardware Brevard. Number one seven two eight five seven six. Repeating blue ticket in color. Number one seven two eight five seven six. If. 720 following another great run by Joe Powell. Well, let's talk a little bit about this. We've seen Anson come in to throw and Joe come in to run or execute that option play. Maybe they find a, found a little combination here uh, that's working. Well, it sure looked good so far. There's a kick rolling ace out of bounds finally. We had some guys down there. They had to pick that up. Had they, we recovered it down there to have been our football again. Yep. But it went out of bounds, so there's the flag, of course. <laughs> That's a live ball until somebody. It certainly is. <laughs> yeah. Um, I've seen that happen a, a time or two in high school football. It's rare, but. Well, sometimes the ball will roll down to that line and they think it's going out of bounds and it just spins and stops. And that almost was the case there because the, all the people up here in the press box, <laughs> yeah, the clock operators, the PA man and all yeah. that were yelling, pick it up. <laughs> so they're, of course, ardently behind their, uh, their Panthers, but Blue Devils are up now 27-20. Let's see if the defense can get the, get us the ball football back real, you know, with, with this lead. We need to not let them score again. There's a handoff, though. Speaking of not scoring again, we're wow. rumbling up to about the 48-yard line. I think that was Smith again, maybe. He's the young man that caught the ball a while ago in the end zone. Yeah, he's having a good game. I mean, he's he able to get up right up the middle, probably the A-gap there, about 12 yards, enough for a first down. We've got to shut that thing down in a, in a hurry here. 48-yard line, first and 10 for the Panthers. 
we score, they answer. That's been the story of the night. Or they score, we answer. It's been back and forth. It's a close ball game. 27-20. There's a handoff again. That's Smith again. Right up the middle. He's right up the middle, and he's angling his way up to about the Blue Devil 43-yard line. So it's going to be in second down in about two, I think. Trevor Smith doing a good job. So it's, it's a gain of nine, second one. They're averaging. He's averaging. That's two carries, one for over ten and one for nine there by Smith to start this drive. There's a snap. Rolling right again. There's Rice. He fires out the flat. Abram that pass is incomplete. That. Abram Justice almost there, battling Rutherford for it. So we're looking at 4.23 left in the third period. Blue Devils are up 27-20. It's been a hard-fought contest. We've had some scores called back. Some penalties have cost us. Some turnovers have cost us. But we're still enduring. Third and short. Big third down play for our defense Third here. and one. They're back up. Again with Rice, they're heavy laden to this right side. Tied into this side also, a wing back and two wide receivers. And there's a handoff again, Ooh. and we're right there on that one. I don't think he got that. No, I, Smith on the carry. I don't think he made the line to gain there. Fourth and short. Yeah, fourth and short. Of course, it is two down territory, so I'm sure they're going to go for it again. They're hurrying up to the football now. Victory Our formation. defense has got to get up. And there's quarterback, He's <laughs> he took it off the left side. Looks like he gained some momentum, forced backwards. Be interested to see where they spot this, but I think he's got it. Yeah, he does. They signal the first down. So it's going to be first and 10 for the Patton Panthers. It's going to be spotted at around the Blue Devil 40-yard line. Yeah, we're marching down through three minutes and 51 seconds here. It's another first down for the Panthers. The defense has got to step up and stop this drive. We need it big time. Another score here. It's, it's just like we said, every little thing's coming down to the fourth quarter now with these two teams back and forth, both first seeking their first conference win. There's a handoff again to Smith. Trevor Smith being a workhorse in this drive. Off the left side, he's going to gain about two, I think, with Riley Anderson coming up to make the stop, among others. Yeah, great Three. great play by the defensive line on that play. We need more of that, more consistently. Sophomore Riley Anderson, by the way. He'll oh, be yeah, that's right. Solid player. So it will be second down now with three minutes and counting left in the third period. There's Rice. He's rolling right again. Pursuit from the backside. We can't get to him. Mm. He's still alive, and he's going to get out of bounds. Finally, I think Jalen Carver came up with maybe Swice good also. Yeah, that was uh, Swice Garrett. good, wasn't yep. it? Yeah, I saw the five, but I couldn't. Yeah, Garrett closed on that quick. He's all over the field. He's got just a nose for the ball. That stops the clock with 2.48 left in the third period. Looking to see the change. It's third down and about seven, it looks like. Well, we take advantage of this and stop them, and uh, they're in four-down territory most likely, don't you think? I absolutely. Uh, you know, they're, they're, they're not going to punt down here. Not the way they punted previously. Yeah. <clears throat> so here's Rice looking at third down now, and about seven. Play and there's down. looking at the play clock. I think that's a delay of game. Yep. Certainly is. So it's going to bring back five. I'm sure the coaching staff not real happy about that. Our coaching staff is. Yeah, that was a lucky break on our part. Of course, you got a backup quarterback managing the game. Reading those signals from the sidelines, too. Yeah. So we got 247 left in the third period. Blue Devils 27, Patton 20. Third and 12. Third down and 12, and this is time for a sack. Absolutely. Because they're going to throw, if you think. They are pumping again. And he's going to keep cutting it back up. Oh. He's still alive, driving forward. <laughs> Ball held out to the side like a loaf of bread there. I'd like to see yeah. somebody strip him of that, but it didn't happen. It's going to be about the 36-yard line for the spot. Well, he gets out in the open field, and you sort of hold your breath because that kid can uh, fly around and shed some tackles. Fortunately, he has, he's he brought did, down. He did on that score earlier. Yeah. So, so we're looking at fourth down now. And about maybe about six. 
for the Patton Panthers as the Blue Devils trying to hold here. Timeout on the field. And we have got a timeout on the field. We're going to take one also. Back to the station, Serena, listening for our fine sponsors. Back after this. Some things cannot wait a few days to get fixed, and that is where Harris Ace Hardware makes things happen. That's right, get the things you need now at Harris Hardware Main Street in Brevard. They have a huge inventory to make your shop a one-stop experience with easy parking in the back. Come by Harris Hardware Main Street in Brevard like others have done since back in 1972. That's Harris Hardware Brevard. All the time out. So while we were gone, Rice has completed a pass to Phillips for the Patton Panthers, and they're down inside the Blue Devil 20 yard line right now. This young man's done a good job at quarterback. He's been accurate. There's a handoff to Trevor Smith again. Great. There you go. Devils are right there, driving him backwards. Sammy Kessinger on that tackle. That was a good tackle. I mean, he was able to get in there, and two other Blue Devils were Joe, able to close Joe it Powell in. also, and I yeah. think number. 51 for the Blue Devils. I saw 51, and that is Riley again, Riley Anderson. Good job on that play. So it is going to be a minute 23 and counting left in the third period as the Blue Devils trying to hold on up 27-20. Had a good game here tonight, but the Blue Devils have done a good job thus far, maybe in this half, of overcoming some of the mistakes and problems of the first half. But we certainly don't want to give up a score here. There's a pass fired out in the flats oh, boy. and almost – Picking it off was Hayden Johnson. Oh, he had room to go. He sure did. <laughs> Hayden Johnson, the big 6'3". Tall young man for the Blue Devils stepped in but couldn't quite pick it off. That's a pick six to the house if he'd caught that one, I think. He yeah. can run. Yeah, there would have been A nobody. minute three left in the third period. So we're looking now at a third down on about nine. Again, we need pressure applied to the quarterback. He's hard to throw when you're flat on your back. Sack would be nice here, Danny. There's the snap. He's going to roll. He's looking to throw, and he's going to pump fake and keep it down the left side. We do a pretty good job there. Yeah. Shifty little runner, but he's picked up a couple. So we got a late flag coming in there, coach of the back judge. It's probably going to be a personal foul. Penalty flag on the carpet. Judging from when it came in and from where. Did not see it so far to that far sideline. Didn't even see the flag thrown. So, Eagle Eye, appreciate that. Every once in a while I catch one. We got a guy coming off. He has helmets off, too. I, I wonder if that has something to do with the penalty. I don't know, but he doesn't look real happy. Uh-uh. They're escorting him sort of off. I don't. Yeah, that's. that's. Is he. That's is, their big receiver. Is he ejected? I think he's gone. Yeah. He's sitting down. Man, I don't know what that's all about. Waylon Rutherford, that's his. Uh, He's, he caught that big pass earlier, didn't he? Yeah, he did. He's the one that went up with Sammy Kessinger, the, the kid who was the conference basketball player of the oh, year last year. Yeah, something. He's chunked his helmet on the ground. He's talk, being talked to by Cantrell Vasquez. I don't know what that call's all about. I haven't seen him mark any, anything off, but uh, well, it's he is sure perturbed. Well, it's obvious a personal foul. He got ejected for something that we didn't see. Uh, so uh, that should be big. They're, they're marching it back now. Yeah, that was a big, big penalty. That was a fortunate break for the Blue Devils because they were pinning us up on defense there. And that's a talented kid. I mean, like we said, he had a great catch Perfect. earlier. Wow. We've got to take advantage of this going down to 53 seconds left in the third. We need to create some separation with the score here. We do, and like to see whether or not he's ejected or not. I don't. He's reject. I mean, he's he's he's. Re he's Definitely feeling rejected, but whether he's been he's, ejected or not is the story. He's benched one way he's, or the he's other. He's on the slab over there, that's <laughs> for sure. So here we go with fourth down now. And there's Rice rolling again. He's the pressure looking, on him. And we've got there pressure. We go. Come and get Caleb. him. That's Jenkins. Caleb Jenkins has dropped him around the 42-yard line of the Blue Devils. Good job, Caleb. So great job there. As a young man slow to get up, but he did get up. Yeah. So Blue Devils will take over at their own 42-yard line. Caleb Jenkins coming through from his defensive line position to make a big play as we've got 49 seconds left in the third period. Blue Devils are up 27-20. Yeah, great play by uh, Caleb on that. 
Of course, you know, he gets the call as running back from time to time. He's good at that, and he's been playing starting defensive line, which is uh, it's a lot of effort work. <laughs> it takes a toll on you when you're going both ways. Well, it does. We don't have the athletes or the numbers. We've got good athletes, but smaller school now than we used to be. Yeah, we don't have the we depth to rotate. We can't yeah. two platoon. All right, there's a snap, and it's Burgess. He's firing out in the flats. It's bounced out there to Kessinger. That's a long way to throw the football, and it's a dangerous way to throw the football. If you can't get it to the outside shoulder of that wide receiver, yeah, they pick one off there, and they're in the house. Got a timeout, looks like. Official timeout. I'm waiting to see. I don't want to cut to the, back to the station until we're sure because they have called a timeout a while ago and then they didn't so we missed a play but don't want to do that again so here comes second down last time Anson came in he threw two incomplete passes then threw a TD to Jalen Carver so see if Anson's throwing again he's in there to throw apparently rolling right he's looking he's flushed and he's firing it's going to be caught in the sidelines Looks like that's a great play Sammy Sammy Kessinger tucked in behind the marker there got down with the ball and caught it right there at the yard marker Great job by Sammy Kessinger. Great job by Anson Burgess to see him, Danny. Oh, yeah, throwing it. He had a tight window to get that ball in there. He certainly did. Uh, had to put some muscle behind that. And, you know, again, uh, do we have a? We got a holding call, and it's against us. So here we go again with another holding. I don't know why we've had so many <laughs> holding penalties this season. Oh, they sure boy. have been killing us. Got to be kidding me, man. I tell you what. We're bringing it back. Yep. So it is going to be down around the 22-yard mm. line or so. Gosh. 21 to be exact. Well, I'm speechless, you know. I know. I hate to be critical. I, you know, definitely pulling for our Blue Devils, but I swear it's getting old. Well, I mean, you know, on the big plays, it, it, you know. It is. It's, it's, they ruined Jake Gravely's catch earlier. That's one of the best catches we've had all season. One of the best catches we've had in many seasons. Yeah. Great run and all that, but that one brought back. Now we're looking at a bad situation. With We're looking at second down and, I don't know, 30 or so. There's the snap, and Anson's looking. He's pump faked. He's firing out in the flat again. That pass is complete. Finally brought down, I believe that is Jackson Burgess maybe on the reception. Yeah, good pump fake on that. But uh, And the clock has just expired, so we have finished three quarters of action here in Burke County. Our score, Brevard 27, Patton 20, back after this. Every cheer for every play, we know there's a little prayer that no one gets hurt. That's why we are there too. Party athletic trainers, physicians, and specialists. We're watching closely for any sign that someone needs care. And if your child is hurt, they're seen right away by the region's top specialists. The Party Sports Medicine team is at every game, match, race, practice, and workout, providing medical attention and guidance. For us, winning is all about playing healthy and smart so you can perform at your best. Progress is an internet connection that matches your love of what's on it. Progress is not being able to remember what a loading bar looks like. Progress is Wi-Fi coverage that actually covers every room in your home. Progress moves at up to one gig speeds, has no data caps, and comes with 24-7 tech support. Comporium. Always ready. Welcome back to Brevard High School football here on WSQL. Our live stream brought to you on the Blue Devil Network and WSQL bringing you our radio broadcast, 12.40 a.m., 102.1 in your FM dial, and we're ready, <coughs> ready to start the fourth period of what's been an exciting ball game, frustrating at times, but the Blue Devils are still up 27-20, even though a couple of touchdowns have been called back. A couple of big plays have been eliminated by penalties, so... Here we go again. Blue Devils will have it. And number eight, uh, Waylon Rutherford is back in the ball game, so he was not ejected. He was dejected, but not <laughs> ejected. 
And there's Anson firing to the sidelines, and the pass is complete. Anson Burgess is throwing. Oh wow! Look well. at that. And then what a down the sidelines, and finally oh. being bumped out of bounds. Was trying to see who that Five. receiver has. I believe it's Carver, Jalen Carver, filling in for. Actually, Jalen's been a big part of our offense, but he's doing double duty tonight without Kyle Lovett. Yeah, and he caught that ball. Great velocity on the ball. Caught it and shed a tackle and picked up probably another 10 or 12 yards on his own there. Well, Patton 35-yard line is the spot. First and 10 for the Blue Devils. 11.50 left in the ball game. Anson Burgess has come in with a rifle arm. Yeah, he's he, he's got some mustard on these things. There's a snap high, and he hands it off. I believe that's Jenkins again. Big Caleb's going to be up to around the 32-yard line. Decent gain on the play, about three. That was Nashawn Griffin. Yeah, was I, Nishan. Thought, I didn't see Nashawn back top. in. Saw the one, but Caleb is one and Nashawn's 11, so couldn't see the other one. But I'm glad to see him back in there. That young man ran well last week. Would like to see him take one to the house also this week. Scored last week and had a great kickoff return, one of the few bright spots for the Blue Devils last week against Chase. Burgess, or yeah, back in, there's a reverse and handoff back inside. Oh, Jake Gravely. That's Jake Gravely, I think, number two on the handoff. Good pickup. Good pickup. It's going to be inside the 30, about the 28-yard line. Well, this this series has a sense of sort of their, a pace to it. You know, you it haven't does. seen that a whole lot this year. They've got some rhythm. And uh, if they can continue this, this might be uh, a, a good place for this to happen in the season. And we've seen Joe with some great runs and executing the pitch. And, you know, got Anson in there with the rocket uh, connecting on some passes. So Burgess is back in. And here he is. He's firing out in the flats. That pass is Ooh. incomplete. It's intended for Kessinger. Threw a little bit behind him. So it's going to be now fourth down and about two. This is big. Yeah, you got to have this. I mean, this 10-24 uh, left in the fourth. Key for fourth down, key possession here for the Blue Devils. Brevard still up 27-20. If you just joined us, we're listening to Blue Devil football on WSQL, 1240 AM, 102.1 on your FM dial, and also live stream on the Blue Devil Network. Big fourth down play coming. Blue Devils up by seven. Start here Four of the fourth play. period. And there's Burgess. He's keeping it. Oh, no, it's dropped. We are dropped. Oh, boy. Kind of a mix-up with the exchange there between Caleb Jenkins and Anson Burgess. And that play was ex blown up by the Patton Panthers. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure uh, what happened on that. Uh, two different plays, uh, I think, uh, miscommunication is all you can call it. Well, that. you're looking actually, you know, whether they're reading it and whether he tried to pull it or whether – it was a design just to, you know, for him to carry the ball, but whatever, penetration occurred, and they have the football. Well, now this is uh, putting the pressure on our defense. Well, our We've defense got to has show got to up. come through. You are absolutely right. They've got to spread out all over the field. They've got that. We've got two receivers over here covering the twins on our defensive right. Let's see what Rice does. There's. A handoff inside, that's Smith again, I think. Up the middle, he picks up quite a few there. Well, I think what they're doing, Coach, you know, they're spreading the field here. They're pulling uh, Abram, that pulls Abram out of that safety position yeah. to cover that second wide receiver. Yeah, so, and they run it up the middle where Abram can't get up to provide the help. Well, they saw that, I'm sure, last week with how successful Chase was with those twins and that screen. Here we go again, second down and about five. Here they come on the option. Let's get there. And we oh, do great. with Smith. Great job, by Abram Justice, breaking that play up. He's still on his feet, but he's forced out of bounds. Abram Justice made that play. Yeah, certainly. Uh, came in and big hit on that play. You like to see it. Of course, uh, running back didn't go down on first contact. And hit pretty high. Yeah. Four or 9.42 left in the in the ball game. 27-20, our score. Time out on the field. We're going to take one also. We'll be back after this. Panther fans, we're on the road next week. Subaru is proud to be your hometown dealer. For over 80 years, we supported you as much as you have supported us. As your hometown dealer, we give you two years of no-cost maintenance with every new Subaru. 
come see us right down the road in Fletcher off Airport Road or online at huntersubaru.com. At Hunter Subaru, we're celebrating. Our new state-of-the-art facility on Hunter Airport Drive in Fletcher is open for business. That's right, we moved. Stop by our new location between the Ag Center and Broadmoor Golf Course just across from the Asheville Airport. See you soon or online at huntersubaru.com. Welcome back again to the Blue Devil Network and uh, Brevard Blue Devil Football and WSQL. And the Blue Devils, after failing on a fourth and two, have given the ball back to the Patton Panthers, who've driven it up now to the Blue, uh, excuse me, their own 35-yard line. Blue Devils up 27-20 with 9:42 left in the ball game. That sets the stage for this. This is big. This whole drive for the Blue Devils. There's Rice rolling. He's still got the football, and he's. Around the right side, then he throws it. Oh, I almost thought it maybe he'd passed the line of scrimmage. I, I did too. I thought he had uh, passed the line. Yeah, but, but it didn't matter. Complete yeah. nonetheless. Well, fourth down and key fourth down for our defense here. Let's see what they do. Fourth down and five. Let's see whether they're going to kick again or not. <clears throat> the young man that's their punter, we thought might have been ejected, was not. So I believe you're looking right now. The punting team's coming in for Patton and. Waylon Rutherford is backing up to kick, so defense so far has done a good job if we will get a, do a good job now with our punt return team. Yeah, watch the hard count on this, try to draw you offside. Absolutely. Waylon Rutherford back, and we've got timeout on the field as the ball is snapped but blown dead. Delay a game? That is delay a game against the Patton Panthers, so they'll back it up five yards. 9.35 left in our game, 27-20, Blue Devils up. Well, certainly the, that's a, another good break for the Blue Devils. We can get this thing in decent field position with plenty of time left to put another. Well, if Rutherford makes a good punt, it'll be his first one of the night because a couple of his other attempts have been pretty feeble. But you never know. Young man's an athlete, no doubt yeah. about that. There's his kick. Don't run, don't into, run him. into him. And that one's bouncing mm. down, and he's going to get a good roll. We yep. didn't field it, so it's going to be dropped around the 27-yard line of the Blue Devils, but we do have the football. That's the good thing. Yep, and uh, we saw that last drive. They put together some rhythm, some pace. Uh, it didn't take it all the way down, but you've got a little over 70. It looks like about 73 yards, plenty of time to march this thing, nothing to – uh, panic about here, but uh, good sustained drive, well disciplined. Let's uh, stay away from the penalties and turnovers. Those two, yeah. yeah those two also. <laughs> you're right about the penalties, and you're absolutely got to be worried about the turnovers too. We've had a few tonight. Let's see who's in at QB right now. I believe it's Joe. Yep. Joe Powell coming back in. Burgess had run the last set. We'll see a lot of running. We hope. There's a handoff to Swicegood, and he's going to come to the right side. And across the 30, up to about the 31-yard line, a gain of about four. I'd like to see Garrett get into the secondary and break one. Yeah, you know, he enjoys contact. You see him when he runs that ball, and when he gets ready, to ta he, he delivers the hit. And so, you know, he plays linebacker. He's used to that. Uh, but I love seeing him that aggression when he's got the ball trying to go downfield. Well, he's had a couple of long-distance runs this year called back. You remember early oh, in yeah. the year, he's had – He's had some really spectacular runs that didn't count, just like the spectacular play that Jake Bradley made. <laughs> yeah. Here we go, though, second down and about six. Joe Powell is going to run the option to the left side. He does pitch dangerously. But there oh, there you go. Is, uh, Sammy? Sat, I'm trying to see who that is. That is uh, a flag. flag. And – I don't know what the call is. Stockton, Stockton I think, was the carrier. Oh, that was Nathan. Good 24, job. wasn't it? Yeah, sure was. Yeah, it sure was. We've got another flag. It came in at the end of the play. So that that could, I don't know what we're looking at. It could be a late hit. I don't know. Again, Joe sold that. He waited to the exact right moment to pitch that ball. Nathan picked it up and delivered a big gain on the play you worry about that with the number of people who are there in the condensed field of that side yeah the pitch to that side it's so dangerous but they executed it well stockton made a great run he is quite a success story as is anson burgess oh yeah it's been great to see anson out tonight and you know he's been throwing 
It doesn't look like he skipped a beat. No, he's got a cannon. There's yeah. no doubt about it. He can throw the ball in. And uh, Stockton. Face mask oh, against the Blue Devils. Us. Oh, goodness. <laughs> you got to be kidding me. How many big plays? Uh, it's just impossible to tell. This is just. The result of that penalty will move the ball back to the 46-yard line of the Panthers. 46-yard line of the Panthers. Blue Devils still have it. Still first down, I guess. Yeah, I mean, still first down, but I mean, first down. Golly. How many big plays? Well, let's go from here. Yeah. 832 left in the ball game. Let's just keep trucking. I mean, trucking. We can't quit. Executing here, and offense is driving the ball. That's what we need. Get a W any way you can. I don't care how pretty it is or whatever. Just get the W. There's the handoff again. No, again, it's Joe again. It's faking us out again, but they're all over the place this time. He might have got back to the line of scrimmage. Well, that's fortunate he did. That was just Joe's uh, determination and athleticism yeah. to uh, keep the preventing uh, tackle for a We've loss We've got another there. flag, too. Yeah, here we go. We're going to wait to see what it down. is. These flags are just killing this drive. Yeah, I mean, you know, you, you try to work into a rhythm, and then, you know, these penalties just throw that all to the wind. Well, we've got 8.08 left in the ball game, 27-20 our score, trying to figure out what the call is, but we're backing up again. Blue Devils are going to go back. This is just the theater <laughs> of the absurd. I don't know what to call. Holding? Yep. Of course. Block, illegal block right in the back. Right. Illegal right. block in the back, so here we go again. First down and about 20 at least. Brevard's own 46-yard line. <laughs> man, oh, man. Joe Powell back, takes a high snap. He brings it in. Now he's got to run again, and he's dropped. Bad snap. Joe got it, but he is belted as he goes down. About, his, about the loss of a couple on the play as Joe Powell was lucky to keep the football there. Well, you know, he plays basketball, and uh, he showed some ball handling there. He had to go up and sort of grab that. That could have been disastrous. Still, we've got a, a second and a country mile here. 7.33 and counting left in the ball game. That clock needs to keep on ticking. We've got to – I hate to see us put it in the air this far away right now. I don't know what else you do, but yeah, – And we're off sides. Mm. Wesley Riley Anderson, rather. He has jumped, so back it up again. We're back to the original. Uh, it's a 30, our own 38-yard line. Sort of where we took possession. Second here. down still, and I don't know how long. That's 10, 10 about 25 or yeah. so anyway. Hard to even tell from here. Second down, Joe Powell, get a good snap. There's a snap, handoff inside. There's Caleb Jenkins. And Caleb, let me go, go, go. Caleb is brought down about the 35 yard line, and now we've got another flag. flag. What in the world? I mean, he had enough for the first down. Another late flag coming in. What is going on here? There's going to be personal foul, hats coming off. They just. Uh, The coach is out there pitching a fit. Yeah, I think. One of the patent coaches is history. He's thrown his hat. He wouldn't like a political candidate. Threw it in the ring. He threw it on the field, and he has drawn the ire of the entire officiating staff. I don't know what that flag was before then. Though. Yeah, but yeah. So the one the flag, Caleb's came, run. Yeah, that came in. I don't know what that was, but then subsequent hats are flying and flags are. All legs are point. everywhere, but I, I can't see how any of these are going to be against us this time. Yeah, and you got three coaches, four coaches of the patent side standing out there in the field looking pretty disgusted about something. I don't know what they're upset about because the run, I mean, I didn't see anything wrong with the run at the end. I thought Caleb was going to break that, but he got tripped up. And we've got one player being held back by the coaches. That's number 30. Cantrell Vasquez, so I don't know what, how they're going to sort all this out. Yeah. We're mar- marching, they're marching it, it deep. 
this is going to be to our advantage for a change. Still haven't seen the penalty call yet. I think there's more than one. Good grief, there might there. There may be two or three penalties tacked on here. I don't know what's going on. We're down around the 10 yard line. Well, whatever it is, it <laughs> absolutely have to get this thing in the end zone. We've got 7:04 left in the ball game. The Wish we could tell you stopped. what those were. No, I have no idea, folks. Personal foul. Personal foul. We're going to find out. Unsportsmanlike. Maybe a couple of those. No, just one. Down to the 10-yard line. It'll be first and goal from that point. All right, we'll take it. Let's go, though. You've you got to capitalize. Big opportunity here. Big opportunity. We need to punch this in. Come on, in. guys. Joe Powell, along with Caleb Jenkins in the backfield. And you've got to figure they're going to run the football here. I don't see us putting it up in the air at all. No, just protect the ball. And here we go again. We've got another stoppage of play. Now we're down to stay on sides and don't hold. There's the snap. Handoff inside to Jenkins. There we He's go. Good job. Caleb Jenkins is going to cross the plane. He's in the end zone. I'm looking for flags. Looking for I don't flags, see any. We don't see any. Caleb Jenkins Whew. powers his way in from the 10-yard line. And Blue Devils now Golly. go up by a score of 34 to 20. Should be 33. Yeah, we're premature on that. Clock showing 34, but Ethan Huggins is coming in to try to make it 34. Sammy will try to get it down this time. And there's a snap. Gets it down. That kick is up, and it is good. good. Ethan Huggins coming through. Blue Devils now up 34 20 with 6.59 left in the ball game. Back after this. back to Brevard Blue Devil football where our Blue Devils have gone up 34 to 20 over the Patton Panthers tonight and were weird circum uh, circumstances that just occurred before Caleb Jenkins punched that one in from 10 yards out with a uh, late hit I guess and then unsportsmanlike on their head coach so that certainly worked out to our advantage now our defense needs to step up again as Huggins will kick off. Well, yeah, you're right. I mean, this is a big defensive stance here because they've been able to move the ball, and there's still plenty of time. With there's a loose ball again. We're on, on it, it, I think. That is a pooch kick working to what it's supposed to do as Abram Justice down on that one. Uh, Patton looked a bit confused there, but the Blue Devils have the football again up by 14, 6.56 left in the ball game. That'll keep your defense off the field. Oh, boy, that was a fine play. Now, that's – I won't question Coach Pritchett anymore <laughs> about the pooch kick. Yeah. That one worked exactly the way they wanted it to. 40-yard line is the spot. We see Anson coming back in. Anson Burgess back in. But you got to think now with this, you know, two-possession lead that the Blue Devils are going to keep the ball on the ground. Well, again, it's good to see him out there after it that is. disastrous just, injury. Let's, let's get our timing down. There's Nishan. There we go. Nishan Griffin down on the right and left side. You said it Nishan earlier. Nishan Griffin is going to go to the house. You said Looking it earlier. Looking for flags. I don't see any. That young man can run. Yeah. I don't know why he doesn't see more action. That's not my call to make because Caleb Jenkins is good too. But that's Nishan Griffin pretty well sealing the deal on this one. Outstanding. Great touchdown play. I mean, uh, started out a little slow, but then as soon as he sees light and he gets vertical, he can go. He can really go. That's Griffin's last week. He had a big score, and that's Huggins is coming on for the PAT. Forty to twenty now. Our score, and we've got a flag. Got a flag. I don't think it's going to be offsides on the Panthers. Well, yeah. they'll probably decline it. They did last time. 
It's declined, so we're going to go to the PAT from the standard position. Sammy Kessinger in, coming in to hold because Kyle Lovett's been out tonight. He has not played. Don't know what's happened to him. But I hope he's back next week. That kick is up, and it is good. Good, good job. So great job by Ethan Huggins. 41-20, our score, 645 left in the game. Back after this. For almost 50 years, Charlie Tire and Automotive Center in Brevard has been your one-stop shop for new tires and auto repairs. You can always expect competitive prices on new tires like Cooper and Michelin, services like computer balancing, flat tire repairs, and tire rotations. Auto repairs include brakes, wheel alignments, exhaust systems, transmission, steering, and suspensions. They also do state inspections, oil changes, and much more. Charlie's Tire and Automotive Center in Brevard, your first stop for new tires and auto repair. Welcome back to Brevard Blue Devil football where Ethan Huggins is teed it up, ready to kick off after Brevard has taken a 41-20 lead here over Patton. In a game that was tied at halftime 14-14 and we've put up 41 now. There's that pooch kick again. They're going to fair catch it. And that's done down around the 40-yard line. So here comes the Patton Panthers and you expect the air game to ensue, Danny. You might, yep, you're right. But, uh, and, and here's the thing. I mean, we've, it's a 21-point lead with 6.43 left, but you just can't get comfortable. The defense has still got to play with intensity, not make any, not let any big plays break here. A turnover and a big play, and things can swing quickly. So, got to execute your uh, game plan. Well, here they come. There's Rice back up at quarterback again. Smith there beside him also. Uh, Cantrell Vasquez back there with him, too. There's Rice, and he's back to throw. He's rolling. He's firing. The pass is going to be completed. A gain of about five on the play. Rice's pass complete to Rutherford. Like, uh, Rutherford on the reception. Aiden Johnson on the uh, tackle for the Blue Devils. Elijah Eubanks combined to make the tackle. Eubanks in there also. Clock is still moving at 623 and counting left in the ball game. So Rice back in, still the quarterback. I keep saying he's back in, but he was not the starter before tonight. Their starter was quarantined. So he is the QB, and he's done a good job tonight. He's rolling, looking, firing, he fires deep, and that pass is almost caught, almost wow. a one-handed grab by Waylon Rutherford. Wow. Yeah, that was an unusual because uh, play he took a long time to develop and uh, looked like he was going to overthrow. Waylon got up, got a hand on it. Joe was back there. Third down. Looks like he might have lost sight of the ball for a second. Yeah, I don't know what happened there, but that was almost a great catch by Rutherford. Yeah. He almost put a one of the Odell Beckham Jr. look on that thing. Yeah, he had one a hand wonder, up. but uh, it's going to be third down right now and about five. As Rice is still the QB. And there's a handoff back inside. That's Vasquez. <laughs> There you go. He's going to be dropped around the 45-yard line, so it's going to be fourth down. I would expect them to go for it here yeah. with about three as we've got 548 and counting left in the ball game. Blue Devils are up now, 41-20. We were tied, Danny, at half, 14-14. Yeah, well, we've seen it uh, lots of times this season and in the spring, these adjustments at halftime, whatever they're saying in there works. Glad to see it. Glad to get to try to get a W here. We need a W. I don't care how ugly it is. There's a look, and he's flushed again. Still looking. He throws against his body out of bounds. Don't want to see our. So he don't see any flags there. So that was fourth down. So we will take over with 5:19 left to go. Expect to see Joe Powell in probably with the running game. I don't know. Joe's walking off the field. Maybe Burgess. So there's no flag. It'll be Blue Devil football first and 10 on the Patton 46-yard line. Yeah, the coaches were pleading for, a, I think, a late hit or something on that play. So, you know, important offensive drive here. We need to eat up clock 
no stupid mistakes and put this thing away. Yeah, let's, this should be kind of on ice if we do what we need to do, but knowing high school kids, I'm not going to say that. So. <laughs> Nothing straightforward, is it? No, it isn't. But we see, well, what are we doing? That was flag. flag that was, Eli Griffin came in and didn't get lined up. You need to come in and confer with the official and make sure you're where you're supposed to be. Number 85 is a freshman, though. He's Nashawn's little brother, and I believe Colt Swicegood is in at QB, so we had some people coming off the bench, maybe a little nerves. Yeah, I got number. Uh, but Eli kind of tiptoed out there and didn't get set. I see a couple linemen in there that uh, look like they're getting some reps. So it's going to be first and 15. Spot is the 49-yard line. It's Colt Swicegood. It takes a handoff. Back inside, I believe that was Stockton, and he's bouncing out. He's still on his feet, <laughs> and there he goes again, Stockton. <laughs> I tell you, Nathan Stockton, what a success story. I tell you, it's just fun to watch him run. I just, tough kid. Stockton kids, I see them in school and all that. They're some of the nicest kids and the toughest kids you'll ever see. Yeah, that's a pedigree of toughness for sure. So we're looking at second down about 13 for the Blue Devils with 432 and counting. Move clock. Yeah, There's, keep rolling along. Got 10 seconds to get the playoff. You better hustle up. Yeah, we've got Eli got to get set again. He's to this side finally. There's a handoff again. And it's Stockton. He's still alive, but he's going to be dropped. Whoa, whoa. Easy. Last thing you want to do is get hurt again. No, I don't want to see that. Not what after he after what that young man's been through. Yeah. Well, it's just not in his nature to uh, not give uh, second, third, That's fourth right. effort. Yeah, he, you're right. He's not wired for it. <laughs> no, but they should have blown the whistle a little yeah. earlier there. They didn't flag anybody, but that was that was kind of on the stripes there. Yeah. The young man from Patton was just trying to get him down, but uh, that should have been stopped. That, but anyway, here we go. Third down and about three. There's the snap handout there. There's again, though. There's the fake. Colt, Colt throwing low. Tried to hit uh, number 11, Nashawn Griffin, on that, but it's incomplete. Colt Swicegood on the on the roll. So Joe Powell will be on the punt, it looks like, for the Blue Devils, as he is uh, one of the best in Western North Carolina. The bad thing about it is he's had a lot of attempts. Yeah. Well, we certainly, he's come come through when we've needed him. Colt. He's trying to complete kick. that pass on the fly. Had the right idea, just couldn't. He connect. could. He could kick collegiately. I really think, Danny. Yeah, I do too. Somebody to work with him. There's the kick again. It's going to be. Look at that. Down. Look at the roll. Look at look that. The roll. Get away. Get away don't let guys. it roll. In don't the let end it end. get. We've done that <laughs> once this yeah. season. We won't do it again. Better Great not. roll. So. Great roll. So the Panthers will take over. Following Joe's Powell's 45-yard punt, and I'm serious about that. He could help somebody. Oh, I, I, I guarantee you, uh, you know, the consistency that he punts with, uh, you don't see that very often at the high school level. Nope. Patton will have the football, looks like, down around the, th what, five-yard line? I can't see from here. Maybe inside the five. Maybe the three or four. Yeah, it's it's three yard line ish yeah. so let's see what happens there's rice at quarterback again usual contingent for the panthers there's a handoff inside and we give up a little too much well you just want to play disciplined football here you know I, I, you sense some frustration from the panthers and they might start doing some uh, extra cricket, but you just you can't engage in that at this point in the game. One of my favorite kids at school, Levi Garrett on the stop. I call him Red Man. <laughs> oh. He's a good one. He's a good kid. He's going to be a good football player, too. Yeah, that's a cool name. Firing deep is oh, Rice. we got to get, get up. That, yeah, went in. that one's going to be incomplete. That went up into the stratosphere yeah, there. Yeah, it did. We got some youngsters that were in for the first time, I think, oh, yeah. quite a while. Yeah. That was number 48. That was Delonte Bethea, I think, on the coverage. Yeah. So we're looking at third down and about five. 
Well, again, you don't want to see him break a big play. No, you don't want to give that you up. Just you just want to shut this thing down and either go for it down there or have mm -hmm. to kick it, have to punt it. So we're at 239 and holding following the incomplete pass. Back to throw again. He's looking. He's throwing deep again. Things Let's get up. Pick way that off. The flag and coming we've in. We got a flag coming in. I don't know. Oh yeah, you got a patent player down. I imagine this is going to be a pass interference. And we've got that's Waylon Rutherford who's down holding. I don't know. Hope that's a cramp. He's holding the knee. I'm afraid though. Young man's a tremendous basketball player. They're on to attend to him right now as that pass was incomplete, but I think their flag on the play is probably going to go against us. Yeah, I imagine it was defensive pass interference, but uh, hard to tell because we were watching the near guy to the sidelines. He's back up pretty quickly. Hope this kid's okay. Yeah, he's being carried off. So hope don't have wish the best for the young man. He's quite an athlete. So 233 left in the ball game. It went against the Blue Devils. I'd yeah, they're bringing it up. It's a first and 10. The spot's going to be looks like about the 24 yard line or so. First down with 233 left. 233 left. There's a handoff inside, and we're going to have a swarm of people there again. Johnson, the carrier, and a lot of our young, a lot of our JV players looks like are out there defensively right now. Yeah, you see a lot of pretty clean shirts out there. This is an all grass. This is Lance a grass Garrett, field. Huh? Nathan Lance, there's Levi Garrett again. The red man coming through. <laughs> So we're 205 and counting left in the ball game. 41-20, Blue Devils up. Well, he tells the fresh crew they don't have grass stains all over their yep. shirt. Here comes Rice rolling left. He's going to keep it. And he's going to be weaving his way down to about the 40-yard line. First and 10 for the Panthers. We've got a minute 49 left in the ball game. As the Blue Devils are... Want to see that clock tick away. Trying to get their first conference win. Well, this is important, like we said before the game, going into these uh, two home games. Blue Devils fortunate to have season-ending home games. There's ripping away across close to the 47-yard line is Tyler Johnson on the carry. Sean Griffin makes the tackle. And Sean Griffin coming in. Good job playing defensive end, it looks like. Yeah, and he's had a, that was a great run. You were right. I mean, he gets the ball. He's a threat. He's grabbing a hamstring, so I don't know what's going on. I don't want to see him injured going into the Hendersonville game. No. We've got less than a minute to go in the ball game, though. 41-20, our score clock's ticking. Play clock's down to about 10 seconds. So. Here comes Rice coming up. There's the snap, handoff again. There's Cantrell Vasquez, Vasquez, Vasquez on the carry. He's across midfield in the Blue Devil uh, territory on the 49-yard line. I'm being told that Kyle is likely to return next week, maybe with a uh, mild groin uh, injury or pull this week. So not, apparently nothing serious, which is good. First down for the Panthers. Oh, did they call a timeout? I don't know, try to look and see. Yes, they have. Time Panthers have call called a timeout. So instead of going back, I want to make this announcement one more time. Remember, along with the radio broadcast, we are live video streaming Brevard High School football games. It's called the Blue Devil Network. Whether you're in the stands, at home, or anywhere, you can watch every play live by going to the BHS Blue Devils football Facebook page. You'll find a post about the live stream with a link to click on. You can do that on your smartphone, your tablet, your laptop or your computer. And remember, if you miss the live broadcast, the video stream production will also be broadcast tape delayed Sunday night games at 6 p.m. on Comporium Cable TV Channel 102. Special thanks to Party UNC Healthcare 
and Southeastern Sports Medicine and Orthopedics for bringing this new technology to you Blue Devil fans. So we're back now as the Patton Panthers have come up to the line of scrimmage, which is the Blue Devil 48-yard line, and we've got 35 seconds left in the ball game. Time for a couple more plays, so it looked probably for them to air it out here. And, well, they're not. There's a handoff inside up to about the 44-yard line. Owen. Good tackle Owen. there. Yep. Colt Swice good on Colt the open Swice field coming tackle. Up. Looking good. 43-yard line is the spot. 20 seconds left in the ball game, and I think Patton's just going to walk away, it looks like. I don't see that they're not even in a huddle, so maybe they're just going to heave one up. Hail Mary here at the end. They come up to the line of scrimmage with seven seconds left. Last play of the ball game coming unless there's a flag. And there's a handoff again, and he's going to be dropped. Ball carrier around the 35-yard line. And, and there we go. Do it. Good job. Our Good Blue job. Devils have gotten their first conference win of the season by a score of 41 to 20. We'll be back for our post-game show following these words from the station. Hey, Transylvania folks, Harris Hardware in downtown Brevard is your number one hometown hardware store for all your everyday needs all the time starting right now. Harris Ace Hardware has all the things you need to make life easier on their shelves when you need it now. No waiting a couple of days, they have it right now. And guess what? Advice is free. Shop Harris Hardware Main Street in Brevard. Hey. I think I'll take the day off. Is your old furnace talking back to you? You're flying solo today, pal. I need a little me time. Mac Heating and Air Conditioning can repair your grumpy old furnace or replace it with a new high efficiency Linux system. <sighs> yeah, sorry. I just can't seem to move any air today. We'll see about that. Get a dependable Linux system from Mac Heating and Air Conditioning and start saving today. Linux, air is life, make it perfect. Progress isn't just about knowing where you came from. It's also about knowing where you want to go. Progress is as big as the Carolina communities we serve and as small as the living rooms we're welcomed into. It's about treating customers as friends because in most cases, that's exactly what they are. Comporium, always ready. Hey, welcome to Opie Taylor's in beautiful downtown Brevard. If you haven't been here for a while, you gotta stop by, man. You wouldn't believe what's going on here at Opie Taylor's. It's amazing. We've got science. We've got trucks. And cars. We've got art. We've got art. That's perfect. This is the funnest thing ever. You can be just like catnip. And of course, we've got games. So stop by and play with us at Opie Taylor's soon. We're open seven days a week in Brevard, North Carolina. That was funny. Some things cannot wait a few days to get fixed. And that is where Harris Ace Hardware makes things happen. That's right. Get the things you need now at Harris Hardware Main Street in Brevard. They have a huge inventory to make your shop a one-stop experience with easy parking in the back. Come by Harris Hardware Main Street in Brevard like others have done since back in 1972. That's Harris Hardware Brevard. With every cheer for every play, we know there's a little prayer that no one gets hurt. That's why we are there too. Party athletic trainers, physicians, and specialists. We're watching closely for any sign that someone needs care. And if your child is hurt, they're seen right away by the region's top specialists. The Party Sports Medicine team is at every game, match, race, practice, and workout, providing medical attention and guidance. For us, winning is all about playing healthy and smart so you can perform at your best. the season by a score of 41-20 over the Patton Panthers. D uh, Danny, way before your time, there was a famous comedian named Jackie Gleason, and his catchphrase was, how sweet it is. Tonight, any way you can get a W is sweet, sweet, sweet. Absolutely, and, you know, what an exciting second half that was. You go in at 14 uh, squared up, and then you come out, uh, you know, and make some adjustments. We saw both Anson and Joe in there. Joe had an outstanding game tonight, both running a uh, couple of touchdowns. I think I have to go back and look at, but 
that one where he made the spin move, got into the end zone. And I, the other thing I really liked tonight was the execution of the ground game. Uh, and we saw it mixed up with Anson throwing the ball, Joe throwing the ball, uh, some big passes. You know, the score is 40, 41 to 20. We well could have had another two touchdowns. Uh, so, uh, again, penalties are um, plaguing us on these big plays, but an exciting game to watch. Defense was able to step up and make some things happen. So, overall, I mean, exciting game for Brevard. And so, look, you know, here we are with uh, two more games left in the conference. You got Hendersonville at home, homecoming, and Polk. And so those are two tough teams, but you come out of this realizing, hey, we've got Anson, we can we can rotate in, give Joe a little bit of break, because of course he's playing safety on defense and punting the ball. You got uh, Nashawn who had a great game, Caleb who ran the ball, uh, and then of course Nathan in there as well. So great to see all those combinations and the final score. And like you said, uh, we needed that win. The team needed the the win for the confidence is going to be a good week of practice going in for what's going to be a really exciting Hendersonville game. We talked about it. We need all three of these if we're going to have any chance to make the playoffs, depending on how some of the other games pan out. But uh, in order to do that, we've got to get Hendersonville next week and poke the week after that. And there's some encouraging things going tonight. So, Danny, thanks for your help tonight. This is Lyndon Clayton with Danny Hine, and we're going to sign off and hit the road. we got a long trip back. That's right. We're going to hear you singing some country and western songs. You got songs. it. We'll put that channel back up. I'll I keep you, you awake. I got you. I'll make you throw up. <laughs> oh, goodness. Sick to your stomach. <laughs> Y'all have a good week. Get ready, Brevard. It's time for Friday night high school football. Party UNC Healthcare and Southeastern Sports Medicine and Orthopedics proudly presents the Brevard Blue Devils High School Football Game of the Week. And WSQL Radio is on the air and online to bring you every single exciting play for the football season. Get ready. It's time for Brevard Blue Devils High School Football.